Nine minutes after the hour of 12 o'clock, an infamous day in radio, October the 9th, Friday, 1987. Lasseter with you until four, but this is the day we introduce the Lasseter Group. It could be exciting, it could be a disaster, it could be something in between, but nonetheless, four of the most notorious, four of the most notorious talk radio callers in Tampa Bay join me today to bat it around. Oh, oh. First and foremost, Lionel, the Gulfport lawyer. Lionel, are you there? Does the Pope do dookie in the woods? Of I, course I'm here. I don't know whether or not he does, Lionel. Is a bear Catholic? I I'm bet... ready. Okay, Lionel says he is ready. Also on the panel, if you will, this afternoon, Carolyn from Newport Ritchie. Carolyn, are you there and ready? I am here, and I am ready, and I am wearing my leather headband. A leather headband, Carolyn? Why? And nothing else. And nothing else. Oh, this is going to be an exciting show. The newest character on the scene, Captain Jack. Captain Jack, are you there and ready? You bet I'm ready, and I knew you'd introduce those two first. Well, of Probably course. It. And I've also saved for last the most notorious caller of all, the rock and roll clansman, Rocky. Rocky, are you set to go, my friend? Good evening, Miss Lasser. I'm kind of dead tired because I just stepped in my house about two hours ago from a long ride from Macon, Georgia. Macon, Georgia. What were you doing in Macon, uh, Rocky? I had, um, I had to attend a very important meeting. A very important meeting. Okay, well, it sounds a little mysterious, and maybe we should keep it that way. Yes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the rules are thus. I will throw out a topic. You will have approximately 90 seconds each, a minute and a half, to respond to the topic. And then when we go through all four of you, we will have a two-minute open general conversation where, you know, you can take shots at each, each other or rebut or whatever it might be. Does everybody understand the rules? I do. Lionel? Understood. Rocky? Yes. Captain Jack? I heard him. All right. Let us go with our first topic. <laughs> Issue number one, Pat Robertson, the fornicating fibber. Will it do him in? Can he survive all of these revelations, if you will? Carolyn, let me start with you. Yes, I think that Pat Robertson's inability to count up to nine months will have a dire effect on his um, desire to be president of the United States. You really However, think it's going to matter? I beg your pardon? You really think it's going to matter to his supporters? I think it's going to matter to some of his supporters who would not care whether the child was born uh, before he said the child was born, but who might take uh, dire uh, consequences attached to the fact that he can't count. Pat can't count. So Pat can't count on your support then either. You bet. Captain Jack, what do you say? Is it going to do Pat Robertson in? No, it's not going to do him in. The people of this country know Pat Robertson. They've known him for years. And there's no way that people are going to uh, not get behind Pat Robertson. He, he's a born-again Christian, and, uh, and we know what that means. You don't. That Carolyn don't know, but we know what it means. And he's a good man. It's not going to do him in. But, Captain Jack, Pat Robertson is guilty of at least one thing that is, well, frankly, just unforgivable to the born-again Christian. Pat Robertson is guilty of situational ethics, is he not? That's all right. That's right. What's the matter with that? What's the matter with situational ethics? Situational ethics, that's, that's the backbone of secular humanism. Well, I, I'm not, I'm, we're not concerned about secular humanism and, and that type of stuff. We know Pat Robertson, we know what he stands for, and we're going to back Pat Robertson. What does Pat Robertson stand for, Captain Jack? He stands for the people in this country, the, the people that settled this country, the people that made it what it is today, not, not these new subhuman type of people that come in later and, and are raping the country now. He, he's one of the people that made this country what it is. Do the, people, do the people of this country stand for fudging on their resumes? Fudging, uh, fudging on their resumes? Yes. For example, Pat Robertson said he did graduate work at London University. It turns out he took an introductory art course as part of a as part of a travel package. Well, I, I've taken correspondence courses too. 
Lionel, is it going to do Pat in? Of course not, because Pat never had a chance in the first place. What we have here is a mendacious, right-wing, Bible-thumping liar. A guy who, to Captain Jack, who apparently doesn't seem to be nonplussed by this man's evidence of his uh, ability to lie, first of all, he fudges his combat record. Or there was some indication that Daddy helped him get out of combat, which, of course, doesn't really matter because he's a born-again Christian. And you can lie, it's okay, as long as you're one of them. Then he says he went to the London school, which was also a lie, but that doesn't matter because, after all, he's a nice guy and his hair is nice. And then we have the business about knocking up his wife. And as Johnny Carson said last night, this is the only time when a candidate for president is going to get in trouble for fooling around with his own wife. <laughs> so the, the, the total question is, is it going to hurt his, uh, his chances? Of course not, because he never had a chance. Jim Baker and Tammy Baker, that incident hasn't hurt them. After all, they're... Well, we'll get, we'll get to Jim and Tammy later. The point is, it's not going to hurt him because whatever little minuscule chance he had in the first place to even be considered for the highest office is not going to be affected by this. If anything, it gives him more publicity, which he so desperately needs. And the bottom line is, he's a liar and a phony. Like most of these people, most of these Bible-thumping Beotians. Uh, Beotians. Okay, Rocky, what do you have to say on this? No one with is, is without sin. Uh, this, this ain't going to hurt the man's campaign. It's going to help him because he's going to be in the hip limelight now. A lot of people thought the man wasn't human. He had no compassion. He had no emotion. Now, let me tell you about it. Ted Kennedy claims to be a Christian, too. He's a, te- he's a murderer. He drowned a woman. And let me tell you about it. Ain't nobody saying much about that. And he was running for president, too, and they didn't bring that up. I think Pat Rocky, Rocky, Rocky what do you mean they didn't the bring that up? Man, and I think he's for the nation. And I think his foreign policy is, is very similar to the mine. And I'm going to tell you something. I didn't like him in the beginning. But when I was watching the 700 Club and I watched Ben Kinslow, I said to myself, here's a man that has potential. This, is, this ain't going to phase him one bit. This thing that he's still got the Christians behind him because they're forgiving people. And when he, he did this, he was not a Christian. He was not a born again Christian in 1954. All right, let me throw this open to the group. Can okay. the people, will the people forgive Pat Robertson? I'll forgive him. I'll forgive him. Hey, I've done the same thing. I'll forgive the man. I ain't that bad a guy. I've done it. I did it. You've done that before, too, Rocky? Oh, yeah. I got two kids before I got married. Are you forgiven, Rocky? I had two kids. But see, I got four kids. Aren't you a sinner? I didn't sinner? get married until I had my third kid. Aren't you a sinner, Rocky? Yes, I'm a sinner. I don't like talking to sinners, Rocky. Well, then get off the line, and I'll take over the whole show. Now, like I said before, we can go on and on with Pat Robertson. The man ain't afraid... To speak his mind. He He's gets a liar. I watched him on Ted Koppel's show last night. He did everybody a service. A man like Gary Hart could not stand up to a man like Ted Koppel. He could, uh, Joseph Biden, he couldn't stand up to him. Hey, Pat Robertson, I'll take my hat off to you. You're okay. I'll drop my pants to him, Bob. That's it. Get Rocky. Rocky, Rocky just made my point. With people like Rocky, Robertson's chances are not going to be hurt. I agree with Lionel. That's that he right. He didn't have a chance from the beginning. But Rocky may be disturbed because Robertson can't count since Rocky thinks there are nine continents. Are, are in, essence, Car- in essence, Carolyn, what you're saying is that boneheads like Rocky and Captain Jack uh, wouldn't be affected one way or the other. You got that right. Well, that, that, that figures because every, every time she opens her mouth, she, anything you tell her... Hey, Captain what Jack, does, Captain Jack. Yeah. Now, we, we know that she's a KGB agent, so I, we, we, we know where she's coming oh, from. Oh, I know more about her. I, wait till we get into this. I, I, just, wonder if she was, I just wonder if she, she swam over here or if she was a defect. I got the goods on her right here. They're all right. All right, I've ladies and gentlemen. I've before. Oh, yeah. We will move on to issue number two following these words. Number two for the Lassiter Group, the PTL Club. Just when you thought it would go away, you'd never hear from it again. Front page news. Can Jim and Tammy come back? Will Jim and Tammy come back? Do they they even want to come back? Captain Jack, let me start with you. Jim and Tammy, can we see them again? Will we see them again? This program's not going to be all Bible fashion, is it? 
No, uh, Captain Jackie, it isn't. Okay, I noticed since we started it off, we're right, you know, we're... Well, right we're, not, right we're not bashing the Bible, Captain Jack. Yeah. Haven't you ever heard one of my Bible bashing shows? When you start talking about Pat Robinson and now you're on Jim and Tammy, I mean, it appears to me... We're that talking about front page news, Captain Jack. Will they be back? Yes, they'll be back. The people of the 700 Club, or, or the, excuse me, the PTL Club are so stupid they're going to put up with a rapist? Well... Uh, he, uh, J there's, these two people are coming back. The people are wanting them back. It's their, it's their organization, and they're coming back. That's all you know. That's all I can tell you. Aren't they're coming back, and they're mm -hmm. going to take the thing and get, and get it out of hot water. He's admitted his mistakes. The man made many mistakes. We've all made mistakes. Is a rapist fit to be preaching the, the scriptures, Captain Jack? Well, I've never heard of him tried in any court in the land for rape. Uh, you know, uh, uh, there's that don't mean anything to me. Well, some of the most brutal charges ever made against a man were made in a national news publication. There is no sign of any lawsuit for slander. Certainly, and who controls the news media? Who controls these these uh, these presses and the television and the radios? You know who controls them? The liberal element in the country that's trying to drag it down? Well, that's all fine and well, but that doesn't prevent Jim Baker from suing. Jim Baker made his statement at the very beginning on Ted Koppel that he wasn't the type of person that was going to do something like that. Carolyn, will Jim and Tammy be back? Carolyn? Carolyn? Is that my mistake? Did I do something wrong? No, I've got that line up, don't I? She'll be back. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Well, then in that case, let me go to you, Rocky. Will Jim and Tammy be back? Yeah, they'll be back, but they won't be at the PTL club. You know, you got to admit, I'll have to admit... They were entertaining, they were fun to watch, and I watched a show many a night with my wife, and we just had a good time. Rocky, but I thought she used to listen to what? my show. What? I thought she used to listen to my show, Rocky. Well, I did, but that, that show comes on on cable like at 12 o'clock in the morning sometimes. What, one eye on uh, 700 Club, one ear on Lasseter? For the PTL Club? Well, I listen to 7... I used to watch the 700 Club, I watched the PTL Club, too. Well, I watched Good Night America, too. So Jim and Tammy are coming back. Well, Jerry, hey, look, don't forget it. Jerry Falwell stole that place. They built it up. Hey, I don't care how deceitful they are. I know they're a bunch of crooks. I know that. But Jerry Falwell stole it. And I say this. I say the same thing that John Kay said of Steppenwolf. Hey, you want to retire? Get out of the way. They built the place. Jim and Tammy Faye Baker built Heritage USA. And that Jerry Falwell come in there and stole it from them. Now I think it's time the people have given a mandate. They said, get out of the way. We're coming back. The people want them. They out $70 million, and the only way they're going to save Heritage USA. Rocky, is how much Jim money, how much money are you going to send? Rocky, that. how much money are you going to send the day that Jim and Tammy come back? I might send them a few bucks. Just a few, Rocky? Yeah. Lionel. I, I, just want, I just want them for an entertainment. Lionel, Jim and Tammy, will they be back? Of course they'll be back, because the, t the type of person, the persons that you need to run an organization like that are charlatans. And they've proven themselves to be two of the greatest. Jerry Falwell do can't, doesn't have it. He's too honest. These people... Jerry Falwell is honest. too honest? Too honest. He couldn't go on TV and cry. Jerry Falwell's mascara couldn't run like theirs. Jim and Tammy are charlatans. They're thieves. They're crooked. That's the type of individuals you need to run an organization like that. And if PTL is ever going to make it, they're going to need the likes of Jim and Tammy. And another thing I want to say is I'm glad that this country allows, because it's nowhere in the Constitution, but I'm sure subsumed under some amendment, is there is a right to be as stupid as you want to be in this country. And if you are stupid enough, like Rocky, to send hard-earned cash to PTL, to these shysters, shucksters, and rip-off artists, I think that's what makes this country great. Lionel, do you really believe... Lionel, send your money to the KGB. Hold it there, Lionel. Rocky. What Hold it there, Rocky. Right we'll, get, we'll get into an open discussion in a moment. Lionel, do you really think that Rocky's going to send his hard-earned money oh, are you kidding? to the, the PTL? The guy's a pauper. What is he going to do? Hock a few bed sheets? Hock a cross? He's a big, have, poor wastrel. He's a nothing. He's a bum. He is you, two dimes. Oh, Carolyn, are you there? We still don't have Carolyn? Hey, Carolyn. I figured we'd drive her off. <laughs> hey, Carolyn went home to wash her dirty dishes. She's got more dishes and dirty okay. dishes in her sink than Howard Johnson's she got. Can't take All right, we'll call Carolyn back. We seem to be having a problem with that line. But again, gentlemen, let me go into the open part of the discussion on this PTL. Can Jim and Tammy come back? What does this say? What does this say about the 
new neo-Christians in this country? Are they worshiping God when they turn on the television set, or are they worshiping personalities? Open discussion, gentlemen. Well, let me say something on that. First of all, a man like Lionel will sit there and cast in stones to, uh, about people, you know. Uh, well, uh, the good Christian people know how to for forgive, and, it's, and, and we, don't, we don't go around judging people. And when people admit they make mistakes, that's part of our, that's part of our belief. They've, they've made mistakes, and they've admitted it. Now, why not give them a... It is, as Rocky said, it's their organization. They made it what it was. It was coming there and taken away from them. And then you have people like like this this Lionel that that, that that has the audacity to sit out there and throw rocks at people who he don't he don't believe in our. Get out of here, you Carolyn. Out you're of back you now. Can, what do you, you have to say about forget, this? You can is forget Tim turn? and Tammy, but you can't forget Ted Kennedy. You can't forget Joe Biden. It's selective memory loss, Jack. That's what it is. You got you that can right. forgive and forget Jerry so long Paul. as it's one of your hey, ink. I don't, I don't, don't think. Don't give me this Christian crap about, well, they've made a mistake. I would like to answer your question. Jim Baker ain't. Hold on, gentlemen, no gentlemen, women, gentlemen, gentlemen, gentlemen. I've got count. Gentlemen. I don't know if any Gentlemen, Gentlemen, I'm going to put you all on hold. Carolyn's back on the line, and she's going to have something to say. Go ahead, Carolyn. So your question, of course, Jim and Tammy Baker are back. Jim is a rapist, and Tammy is a hunch front. You're jealous. You're jealous. And let me tell you this. The people like Captain Jack, touche to you, Lionel. There is no specific right in the Constitution... But, but in their case, it's not only inalienable, it's inherent. Touche, darling. What's she do? Go look in the dictionary? <laughs> What's the matter, you Captain Jack? You don't understand the word? Yeah, man's in New York. That's right. And if ignorance is bliss, if ignorance is bliss, you're the happiest man in the world. Let's get back to common sense here and forget about that. Forget about that sissy dictionary. And Forget let's get about back the to Constitution. And hide behind them big New York words. But I'm sorry, you ain't in New York. No. You know what's amazing to you me? You ain't in New York, woman. You know what's amazing no, to me? Now, how are you going to get out of that? I'm God, a Kentucky hillbilly, Rocky. Rocky. Yeah, that's right, Jack. 28 you know minutes Jack after the hour down. of 12 noon, the Lassiter Group will continue. The Bill of Rights. Asking for a prohibition against discrimination against gays. Rocky, how about it? No way. No way. Why not, Rocky? No way. Them, them, them people, them faggots are the ones that brought that disease AIDS in here. They've been, they were in the closet. Now they're all running out here trying to get, they're making money off this. This is all, this is a smoke screen for them faggots to get a bunch of money. I think we ought to put them, all of them, hey, let them, hey, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll tell them that. We'll trick them. We'll say, okay, you want another amendment? Okay, daddy, you want number 28? I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to do it, and we're going to get them all together. We're going to find out who they are, and we're going to tag them. We're going to put a tattoo across the forehead. How are you going to find them, Rocky? They're going to throw their hair long and cover up with bangs. Forget Rocky, it, Rocky, we're, how are you going to find them? On their cheek. They got their destruction. They're Rocky. They're destroying this country through AIDS. AIDS is one of the biggest problems in this nation right Rocky, now. Rocky, how are you no going to find them, country. Rocky? It's spread all through the United States. Rocky, how are you going to find them? How are you going to find I these gays to tag them? them? We're going to go ahead with that. We're going to go ahead with that new amendment. Okay, come on out. Come on out, faggots. We're going to trick them. Let them. Let, let's get some people out here. We'll trick them. Carolyn, is there a need for an amendment to the Bill of Rights no. for homosexual rights? It's my turn, Rocky. I don't know whether there's a need for it or not, but I would defend to my death the right of gays to petition for that amendment. They have every right to do so, and I would like to say... Will you support them, though, in getting it? Of course I would support them. I would like to say that Rocky, in my opinion, is a latent heterosexual, and he doesn't know why. And also I would like to say that gays have as ma many rights under our democratic republic as rednecks. Lionel, what do you have to say about that? Do well, gays all, need an amendment? Aside from Rocky being a latent heterosexual, he has penis envy. You got it, that right. But instead of an amendment, what I think we should do is the Supreme Court should include within the 14th Amendment the equal protection... You're a lesbian and a faggot. Hold on Ronald. there, Rocky. Hold on. You're a lesbian and a... You're Hold a on, Rocky. Yeah, you'll, you'll get your chance. Oh, hey, hey, Rocky, you'll get your chance. I hope you got, your, your, I hope got your condoms on, because when you get close to each other, y'all better be careful. Rocky... Hold on, or else you don't play anymore. You'll get your chance in the open part of the discussion. Go ahead, Lionel. Bobby's drunk. But anyway, You're a faggot, Lionel. You're an idiot. 
So Faggot. anyway, I think we should need to have, under the 14th Amendment, the Equal Protection Clause, heter uh, homosexuals <laughs> should be a part of a suspect class <laughs> that would allow them to avail themselves of the 14th Amendment, which is really already there. But if the ERA didn't make it, how in the hell can a homosexual Bill of Rights make it? Another thing, too, is I don't like there being any type of a Bill of Rights or, or an amendment, because all that does is it, it, it prohibits state and federal governments from being the transgressor. It doesn't prohibit private industry from... Uh, so, Lionel, violence. you are not in favor of an amendment to the Bill of Rights. No, but I want a... a I, I want case law to be reconstrued. Mm -hmm. you like Captain that Jack. Word, Rocky, you idiot, you. Captain Jack, you are Friday. you going to be on the side of Lionel? What do you mean by how it reconstrued? Let me tell you something. These sub sub whites that I call them, these late arrivals that come into this country, settled by the you know, the English and the Scots and the Germans and the ones that fought the war the in the 16 and 1700s, they belong to this group of the blacks and the Cubans and the Mexicans and the Puerto Ricans. And the <laughs> what's the matter, oh, Captain Jack? Are you? Are what's the matter, Captain Jack? Oh, brother, those brother, are the people that go got, for it. Those are the people that's got the AIDS. <laughs> They're the ones that spread it. I have, <laughs> I have no compassion at all. Any of them, go, go. and every one of them don't deserve anything. As far as I'm concerned, the Constitution don't even apply to them. So, Captain Jack, you're on Lionel's side on this. Lionel's side? Yeah. No, I'm not on Lionel's side. I'm on Rocky's side. He doesn't have the difference. You're you the Lord. You don't know what the hell you're talking about, Jack. You don't have no right. You don't know the difference, Jack. Listen to listen to Listen to them people. Jack, don't listen to them no people right. scream. It's getting to you. You ain't in New York. You ain't in New York. It's Mr. Lassiter? You can't yes, Carolyn. You I wanted like to say that, that Rocky... Rocky that Mason Dixon line. Go back to Russia. Rocky is the only Russia. man. Go back to Russia. Rocky is the only Go back man. To I have well, we'll just put everybody on hold and start again with Hello. you, Carolyn. Okay. Rocky's the only man I have ever heard of who suffers need for penis extension and penis envy at the same time. Okay, Rocky, Carolyn's talking about your penis. What do you have to say about that? You want to suck it, baby? Whoa, whoa. Come on, suck it. Captain Jack, do you like this kind of talk on the radio? Well, I don't appreciate every time we try to have a discussion that that, that, Lionel, and, that Lionel and that Carolyn have to start talking Captain about Jack, penis. Captain Jack, are you there? Hunt? Captain Jack, can I say something to you? You sure can. You're a good American. Let me tell you, what we're dealing with is is two liberal communist sympathizers that. that are using this program for a smoke screen to disturb our young children. They're not going to get away with it. Carolyn, can I talk to you? You bet. Did you hear Lionel? Is we're dealing with a guy named Jack Off and Rocky. Uh -huh. You got it. Two <laughs> intellectual <laughs> deficits. Two people with chromosomes missing. Yeah. Two people it. who are only putting hey, you're still stations. stealing my hey, you and Theodore Bundy. Hey, hey, let me tell you something. You and Theodore Bundy are two of a kind. Reason. Reason. You go around ripping off these old ladies. You are yeah, yeah, yeah. The young children got a little taller there, it's and you come in there filling your pocket book. I, I don't know whether you... Issue number four. Oh, my God. Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster, will they find him? Do you care if they find him? What do you want done with him if they do find him? Carolyn, is Nessie for real? No, and I could care less how long they search for him, and I wanted to say also that Rocky has just said he's a merkin, and yeah, I John, totally agree with on, him. Baby, he is a merkin. Shake it and you ask Rock, I want to serenade you, baby. You're a merkin. I never that serenaded right. a Russian woman before. How do you like it? You're a merkin, hey, baby. I'm going to make you feel at home in a minute. Hey, hey I'm going to make you feel. My you, name is Vladimir Volkov. You I are, indeed. Hey, I would like to welcome you to the country, Carolyn. Rocky, and I know Rocky, 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 you like Rocky, behave yourself, or, you know, hey, yeah, I'll put Tom from Luth on. He wants to be on, too. Rocky, Rock Nest Monster, is he for real? Do you care? Well, I had a friend that went over to Glasgow, Scotland, and he was telling me that it ain't for real. It ain't for real. Lionel, is Nessie for real? No, he's as real as Rocky is, but he speaks better English. Captain Jack, you're a seafaring man. Because he can make money off that little monster down there. Captain Jack, you're a seafaring man. Shut up, Rocky. Captain Jack, you're a seafaring man. How about it? The only monsters we've got in this country is people like that Carol and Lionel and the rest of them that are trying to tear our country up. That's what they are. That's what they are. Okay, issue number five. Jessica Hahn, bimbo or victim, Lionel? Victim. Victim, why? Jim Baker, the rapist. 
Jim Baker the rapist. Three people have come forward saying that they have had affairs with Jessica Hahn. One of them saying it was prior to the Clearwater Beach Motel incident. That does not preclude Jim Baker from being a rapist. She could have been a prostitute and still raped in Clearwater by Jim the liar Baker whom Jackoff over there has forgiven because he's a Christian. But Lionel, if she lied about her virginity, might she not be lying about the entire story? That's always a possibility. But let me ask you something. If it was untrue, why wouldn't Jim Baker, as you so astutely pointed out, why wouldn't he file a libel action against her? Uh, because truth is a defense. He knows it's true. She knows it's true. And aside from being a, a, a liar and a... a uh, a mendacious liar at that, he's a rapist. And it's true. And, and, but she might still be a bimbo, too. Bimbo can be raped. Captain Jack, have, have you seen the uh, pictures? Is she a bimbo or a victim? I went, down, I, went, I went down yesterday to the Circle K and got the magazine, and I read the story. Uh-huh. And, and, and the woman's got round heels and got calluses on her back. Isn't that against your religion, she's Jack? Got, oh, huh? Lionel, she's got, you'll have your chance. She's got calluses on her back. What makes her a bimbo, Captain Jack? Just what you said. People are coming forward now and telling exactly what she is, and, she, and all she's doing is making millions of dollars off of off a of baker. That's is all. it okay to rape a bimbo? She wasn't raped. Why don't you believe her? I, I don't believe her. Why not? Oh, I just don't. But Jim Baker will steal old ladies' money. Why not steal a young girl's virginity? Lionel steals old, old people's money, too. <laughs> Rocky. Well, he, he's about, maybe he's a rapist, too. Rocky, is Jessica <laughs> Hahn a bimbo Jack or a victim? Uh, Jessica Hahn is a professional prostitute hired by Jim Baker. I think they both had a good time, and I think money did exchange hands. How do you know she's a pro? Have you uh, bought, bought her services, Rocky? No, but I have uh, heard that she said that she did want to get it on with Jim because she had a thing for him. Where did you hear that, Rock? Oh, I heard that on the radio, on your station, matter of fact. I didn't. I never had her on. I don't believe anybody on this station no, you did. you didn't have it on. It was another person on your radio station. Hallucinations, Bob. Jessica Hahn is nothing more than a, a press, professional prostitute. Carolyn, bimbo or victim? She's a victim, of course. Whether she was a prostitute or a virgin, as she claims. Any woman who is raped by a man is a victim, and uh, Jim Baker is a rapist. And later on in the program, I would love it if Lionel has the guts to tell Rocky what a, a merkin is. She's not a victim anyway. No, Who's she not a victim? No victim. She she had, hey, she needed a little bit of cash. Yeah. And what are you jealous, Rocky? Some cash, and she says, "Baby, I'm gonna get some of that action, and I want some of that money." You're and jealous, says, aren't you, Rocky? And now yeah. she's uh, in Playboy magazine, and, and she'll play her cards right, like uh, Carolyn would do it. In your dreams, she, she Rocky. She might get a movie career out of it. She would just play her cards right. In your dreams. But she's gotta be careful. She got more sense. Issue or Carolyn, number I'll take six. In Playboy. Maybe Ronald Reagan, Reagan is he being a jerk in pressing the Bork nomination? It is obvious to everyone there is not a chance in hell that Robert Bork will be nominated for the Supreme Court or that Robert Bork will be confirmed for the Supreme Court. Is the president being a jerk in pushing this issue? Captain Jack, let's start with you. Re repeat that. Ronald Reagan, is he being a jerk in pressing for the Bork nomination? Well, first of all, our president's not a jerk whether he's pressing for the Bork nomination or not. And no, he's not. Uh, look at the... It's a lost cause, Captain Jack. What? It's a lost cause. It may be a lost cause, but good people don't give up lost causes. They keep fighting. They fight and they fight and they fight. And uh, whether he gets him in there, he's going to make his point. But, Captain Jack, in the meanwhile, that ninth chair sits vacant. Good, good. And, and, it, and it goes right back to the Congress, who's the ones that are supposed to be making the laws and, and, and trying to stick lawmaking on the Supreme Court. That's a problem with the Supreme Court right now. The congressmen that up there won't make the damn laws. They want the Supreme Court to make laws. And Burke refuses to do it, and that's the problem. That Kennedy sit right there and just wrangled and wrangled over that man, and he hadn't got the guts to make the laws. That's the problem there with Burke. Carolyn, is the president being a jerk in pressing this issue? Of course he's being a jerk. When the president was asked the question, don't you think that uh, the nomination for confirmation of Judge Bork will fail on the Judiciary Committee, Ronald Reagan said, over my dead body. And he's in a hell of a position because he doesn't want the right wingers in this country who are furious with him to make that prophecy fulfilled. Lionel, how about it? President of a jerk for 
pushing this issue? Of course he's a jerk. Bork is dead, just like Rocky and Jackoff over here. Bork is dead. Absolutely. What Ronald Reagan is doing is he's intransigent. He's obstinate. Bork was dead the first time he opened his mouth. Now, what Reagan could do is he could nominate, or somebody else could, Higginbotham, Posner, people from Chicago, brilliant people who would go through, Howard Baker even, they would go through without a problem. But no, he has to appoint a, a right-wing neo-Nazi uh, who absolutely. at one time used to be a socialist. At he one a time, an individual that and both Rocky and Jerkov over there would have hated. So who does he pick? He picks a guy who makes Hitler look like Gandhi. And what is he doing now? Hey, what, what you're oh, saying about Hitler, Lionel? Buddy. Shut up. What you're saying ignorant. about Hitler there, Lionel? Rocky, is the president a jerk on this issue? No, he's not a jerk on this issue, but I do predict that Mr. Bork will not make it in court justice because of the slanderous... <laughs> I, I, I believe oh that he Oh, my will... God. What? Hey, shut up a minute. What a prediction. The Jewish, <laughs> the Jewish media is going to destroy Mr. Bork. Oh, Jesus, I can't stand it. <laughs> Democrats want the black constituency. <laughs> yeah, they the want to get that vote, <laughs> and the senators that are against him, oh, they, they, they don't. Re they want to get My on the bandwagon and destroy the man's character because they're afraid of their political gain. <laughs> Rocky, not let me ask you this: Did the Jewish media destroy Bork because of his views, <laughs> the or did they destroy Bork <laughs> because he divorced the Jewish <laughs> woman? Nothing more than propaganda. <laughs> Rocky, you're tremendous. I can't if you stand it. Drunk, I swear to God, the black you're serious. The, hey, the black people do. Hey, they have, they have made him out to be a racist. The Mr. Black Bork is not a racist. The black people, Bork gets on TV and says he's against integrated lunch counters, and the black people told him to say that? Well, for that myself. Me too. Oh, God. So, so hey, Bork is like wanna, you? Yeah, I don't, don't want to go into a restaurant and sit beside some spook oh. slobbering all over the table. <coughs> hey, this country belongs to the white people. Let's give it back to tradition. Oh, Let's yeah, have a cleansing of our nation. About, right? <laughs> 12.46 sure right the time, the Lasseter Group in high <laughs> well, gear. We yeah, will right, continue right, the yeah, conversation. Yeah, Issue number seven. Jesse Jackson started appearing last Sunday in ads for what amounts to a trade school. Is there anything wrong with a presidential candidate or a potential presidential candidate in this case selling his name and his picture for a commercial endorsement? Lionel, let's start with you on this one. Absolutely not. First Amendment. Our president was an actor. There's no reason for that to prohibit or proscribe Jesse Jackson from doing it. Albeit, not the best move I can think of. But if he wants to make some money on the side, if he wants to endorse a product, if he wants to do what people like you and Dickie Norman and all these other guys do by selling something, by advocating it, he has a First Amendment right. But politically, it's not the wisest thing you can do. Why not? Because it looks like you're a huckster. It looks like you're there one minute, you're talking about saving the nation and being the next, uh, the leader of the free world. And you're pushing a business school or whatever the hell it is. Well, we already know that everybody who announces for office ain't playing with a full deck, so what's the difference? Well, intrinsically, nothing. I'm just saying, based upon the way people look at candidates, like Jackoff and Rocky over there, it's not to their best interest, I think, to do something like he did. But does he have a right to do it? Of course he does. And I hope he makes a lot of money. He's going to need it because he doesn't have a chance. But I hope he makes loads of money, and the First Amendment allows him to do whatever the hell he wants to. Captain the Jack. The First Amendment can allow Jackoff and Rocky to say the stupid things they've said this afternoon, then certainly uh, Jesse Jackson can do an ad for anybody. It's Captain Jack, right is there anything wrong with that endorsement? Well, first of all, you use the term potential candidate or potential president. He hasn't officially announced he's not yet. not going to be president. And I've heard this Lionel and this Carolyn on this same radio station say that they would vote for the man. So they, the people that are listening out there, if that don't give them an idea of what they're listening to, he can run 
off his mouth all he wants, and her too, but you know where they're coming from. The man is, and he used the word, a potential huckster. He is a huckster. He's a, he's a racist. You call us racist and bigots and, and, and rednecks. And moron. Yeah, and that's what he Hold on, and Lionel. Hold on, right. Lionel. And that's what he is. Captain Jack, this is not without precedent. Ronald Reagan allows his image to be used in advertisements for the National Rifle Association. This is not without precedent. Uh, he's still a huckster, and he's still a... He's still what, a Ronald scumbag. Reagan? Is Ronald Reagan a huckster? No. Well, why is it okay when Ronald Reagan does it, but it's not okay if Jesse Jackson I, I, does it? Smacks of racism, Captain I Jack. I never saw an ad of the president in any magazine if or anywhere else read. backing up the national right. That's a bunch of garbage. Well, I know it's a bunch of garbage, Captain Jack, but it happens to be true. Where, where'd you see it? It's on television, and it's in the print media. When? What do you mean, when? It's been going on for years, oh, Captain I, Jack. That's great that you tell me that. And what, do you, never... what do you still got, you know, old copies of Uncle Billy's whiz-bang book there that you read through? Haven't you gotten any new magazines recently or watched Wake television? Wake up, Jack off. Wake up, you're being made a fool out of Oh, you're, you're the one that's being made a fool out Wake of Wake up. You and Rockhead over there are being made fools of Hold you on, gentlemen. Gentlemen, hold Why on. You you hold on, so gentlemen. Carolyn, is there anything wrong with this? Of course not. The same law which protects the president's son, Ron Jr., from putting a condom on a banana on PBS protects, protects Jesse Jackson from his endeavors. Rocky, what's wrong with it, if anything? I have a problem when we take a, uh, a communist that likes Gaddafi and kisses Castro and rubs Louis Farrakhan's behind and make money off of it. I think he's a black racist, and I don't think he has the best, best interest of the United States at hand. Should black racists should uh, black racist be forbidden from turning a buck in this country? Versus white racists like you. Uh, I'm not a racist. White racists have I'm no problem with that. Well, well, okay, Rocky, I'm for the sake of this con for the sake of this conversation, we won't call you a racist, but what I'm asking is should black racists be prohibited from earning a living in this country? If they're communist, I do think so, but How about white racists? Should no they be prevented from earning Richard a living? Prior uh, does commercials. Should white racists be prevented from earning a living? Uh, I don't think we should take white communists and, and let them do advertisements. You didn't answer Carolyn the question. Or, uh, you didn't answer like the Lionel. question. These two are communists, and I don't believe we should let liberal faggot communists Can on I the TV screen to advertise. Stop. Really? Oh, stop wait one a second. minute. One second here. Do you really think, Rockhead, do you and Jackoff actually think that we are communists? I think you're communist sympathizers. Of course well, they do. Let me answer that I think, question. I won't say, hey... I don't think you're communist, but I think you're communist sympathizer. Yeah, let me answer that, ask that question. Oh, and I can't you, wait. Let me get you to the communist to, party. To stupid. I think you people would like to divide the wealth. I think you people would like to see I want to divide like, the hey, wealth. You people are jealous because I have a lot of money, and you'd yeah. like to share it with me that, like trash. <laughs> like you got you money? would like to separate you, it you've because got you're money, too Rocky? lazy to work. And ladies, everything you said today, I've written here in my head. In the newspaper this morning, two newlyweds were fined a total of $1,000 placed on probation for their drunken escapades aboard an airliner. Amorous clinches were described in the court papers. Seems the two young people were married in Tampa, got aboard a Continental Airlines jet, were a bit tipsy, and the new husband started fondling and caressing his wife's bare breast. There was a nine-year-old child sitting across the aisle. They were jailed for 48 hours. The plane made an unscheduled stop in Houston and have now been fined $1,000 and placed on probation. Rocky, what do you think about that? Well, you said a nine-year-old uh, child witnessed to this, right? That's correct. I think that's inappropriate behavior for oh. two adults to take a stance like this in an airplane i don't i think uh, there's a time and place for everything and i don't like to see this kind of thing in public is it enough of a, a sentence enough of a penalty a thousand dollars no uh i don't like the way it's what should have happened uh he should have got his ass kicked on the plane rocky have you ever fondled mrs rocky's breast in public in public in public uh no any Not place where it might have been witnessed where it, went, where it would have been witnessed? Where it might have been Does witnessed have by a child. Uh, yes, she does. She's a 40D cup, jealous boy. Yeah, right. Um, he only weighs? sees it from the back, Rocky. He don't ever see it from the front. Well, you know, 
I, I'll tell you something about Lionel. He's so jealous because, you know, he spent all this time in college and spending up about burning the midnight oil reading his little dictionary, and I'm a multi-millionaire. Yeah, and I'm on the Roosevelt. This nice sissy to meet here, you. this sissy here can't stand it. He was trained People by Lionel Calhoun. Off Carolyn. Of hey, Lionel, I can't Carol, help it. Hold, can't on, help it. hold on, gentlemen. Gentlemen, hold on. Carolyn, is this appropriate punishment for this type of behavior? Oh, I think it's much too heavy a punishment. And for a Klansman who's into S&M, I find Rocky's opinion... Hey, that what would be appropriate activity. punishment, Carolyn? Oh, Shut up, Rocky. That is in the hole. Shut up, Rocky. Carolyn, what's appropriate punishment? Maybe ban, maybe ban them from that airline for a while and give them a $500 fine for offending the morals of a, a minor. Captain Jack, where do you stand on this? Well, I'd say if Carolyn would pay them to funnel her on an airline. <laughs> Hey, they didn't have a hard time finding anything. Captain thing. Jack, how much would you pay to fondle Carolyn? Uh, I, 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 <laughs> hey, I, hey, I'll fondle her for free. Shut up, Rocky. <laughs> well, no. Masseter, in like his to, dream. I'd like, to, I'd like to look at these people. I'd like to have a picture of them and just see. I'd like to see what they really You couldn't were. tell the front from the back. <laughs> yeah. Lionel, is this appropriate punishment? Of course it's not appropriate. It's too strict. First of all, I want to know who's got jurisdiction. Which state did they fly over? What is it, federal? I mean, who who is responsible for bringing them to court? I believe it was, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it was on a federal charge because it took place in an airliner above uh, the ground, off the ground. This they stopped initially in Houston. This is a example of a waste of the court's time. What oh. they should have done is, instead of taking these people on their honeymoon and find them, they should have sat down with a nine-year-old kid and said, Kid, welcome to the real world. You're going to see people fondling uh, Absolutely. People in public, and you're going to hear idiots like Jackoff and Rockhead on the air saying stupid things. Rocky, so how? Eyes, kid. Rocky, it's a tough world out there. Hold on, Lionel. Hold on, Rocky. Rocky, how does right? this differ from a man getting on the radio at night and giving explicit, intimate details? Of his sexual escapades with his wife. Airplane, I don't think there was an on an airplane. Oh, oh no, oh, I heard that, that Rocky. Airplane. It wasn't no. a subway. It's okay mm. because kids were listening to this yeah. pervert. Of course. This Lionel, you weird. used a lot of nasty language sure today, and I would like to discourage the parents out here listening to do not take these encouraged your old minds out and here. And that he said nothing to trash. compare he with what that. you yeah, said. You don't hang around nothing. Google. Rocky, how is it any different, how is <laughs> it any different seeing this activity than hearing about this activity? How much right. should you have been fined? How much should I be fined? Yes. There, there could have been nine-year-old children listening to that disgusting of display course. of what you and Mrs. Rocky do. That's tough. That's tough cookies for Which them. Which was fantasy because you're impotent. Of course Everybody he's knows impotent. it. You've got you're jealous, Lionel. Andy. You're jealous. You're you spend all you spend up all night reading your dictionary. Yeah, that's right. Rocky You'll never brain have and what I've got. All you're not trying to read. You're a sissy. You're an ignorant. You're a what? sissy ball with a reason. silver spoon in your know, mouth, riding you around in a bass Mercedes Benz you know with a telephone in your car, and you. Issue you number nine. The NFL player strike still going on in full force. Are the players entitled to free agency? Obviously, the main thing is going to be as the last of the largest in the background of the last issue. The NFL player strike. How about it, Captain Jack? Are the players entitled to free agency? What did you say, Lasseter? Are the players entitled to free agency in the NFL? Are, are the players... Certainly they're entitled to free agency. So you support the union. Well, certainly I support the union. Carolyn, how about you? Do you support the union in this matter? Y yes, I think they have the right. And I would like to say that, uh, again, touche to Lionel. Rocky's brain is impotent because its seat is... We've already genitalia. passed that topic. Lionel, are the players entitled now, to free Karen's agency? Got a sexual hang -up. Shut up, Rocky. To it. They're only entitled to it if the owners agree to it. It's as simple as that. There's no free speech. There's no freedom. This Very is good. professional sports. The owners run the show. And yes, in my own heart they do. But if you call the house says no, then they're not going to get it. Rocky, you sound like a beer-guzzling couch potato who sits in front of the tube on Sunday. How about you? I don't watch football. Are you in support of the players on this issue? No. Are you a supporter? I'm, ag I'm against He's a jock union. Strap. You're against unions. Union. a communist-backed organization that's ripping this country apart. So you say that the players are not entitled. The players should be treated like slaves and owned. If they, hey, if they don't want to do what they're doing, let them go home and become a lawyer like Lionel. All right, we're at the end of the first hour. Oh, there they go. We'll just put them on hold.
We're at the end of the first hour of the Lassiter Group. All participants have agreed to a second hour, so if you can put up with it, what the hell, I ain't got no shame. I'll put up with it as well. One more hour of the Lassiter Group yet to come. After the hour of 1 o'clock, Friday, October the 9th, 1987, a day that at least four of you have waited for. The day that we introduced the Lassiter Group. Radio history. Not all history is good, not all history is bad, and only time will be the final judge on this particular day. Lassiter with you until 4, the Lassiter Group with you for one additional hour. The Lassiter Group, four of the most notorious callers in Tampa Bay Talk Radio. The rock and roll Klansman, Carolyn from Newport Ritchie. The infamous Gulf Portal. Talkie, please say it Mr. again. Mr. Lassiter invited us all to be here, and he invited us all to talk. Not just some Jewish lawyer. Is he paying you? Lionel, or, uh, Rocky, I want to know if you still want to be affiliated with an organization that, that Lionel and Carolyn support. Well, first of all, I'm no more prejudiced than Lionel or Carolyn. What they're doing are lying through the teeth. They're just as prejudiced as I am. What? The only problem is they will not admit it because I have heard Carolyn Dungas on other shows lambast, lambast the Jews and the Roman Catholics. Oh. And I have never come on here and cut down Roman Catholics. But I have heard Carolyn say such accusations, and I have never come on this radio station and You're said a liar, like Rocky. That. And she is just as prejudiced as I am. You're a liar. And I'm not going to call you a liar. I'm going to call you a misunderstood you person. You are a liar. Because I will not use such language. There are there people are who listen to this program. Let me tell you something right now, Carol. Wait a minute, You're Rocky. You're just as prejudiced as I am. What did you call me before if there are kids listening? You're just as prejudiced as I am, but what you, you won't admit it. What did you call me before? You won't admit it, and so are you, Lionel. Don't give me you this. You like black people. Don't give me this crap about the kids. You can spend all your time Hey, Weasel. Hey, Weasel, You're what did you say? You're just as prejudiced as I am, What Lionel? was the you word you used it. before? What was the it's word you used nature. before? It's human nature okay, to be prejudiced. And you're such a moron. You want to get on the winning so side. Crazy. You want to be on the hip liberal you are side. The and pretend that everything's okay. But you're the just as prejudiced as I am. You've got chromosomes missing. You're just you as prejudiced as I am, Lionel. You want to your brain is in your it's it time to limit the migration of newcomers to Florida. We've already started hearing this very week about the possibilities of a water shortage. Anybody that sticks his nose outside the door knows that the roads are hopelessly inadequate to deal with the people already here. Anyone who's ever seen a picture of what the area looked like just as recently as 10 years ago, knows that the ecology is endangered, the schools, the services, they're all under tremendous strain. Is it time to place a sign at the border saying, stay away? Captain Jack, what do you think? Now oh, you're into my territory, and I was hoping you'd get to that question. First of all, these here people that come, they're coming down here now don't know a damn thing about Florida or the history of Florida and could care less. They're just like those two creeps on the phone. All they're interested in is what they can get out of it. The natives are looked upon Carpet as... Baggers. The, natives, the natives are looked upon as... Forget the natives, Captain Jack. Is it time to keep newcomers out? Yes, and, 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 and the ones that preceded them, that late bunch, too. The, the settlers of this Florida were strong people. They were good people, and they made the state what it is, and now we have these people that are coming in here that are ruining our state. They don't give a damn about this state. All they want to do is get what they can out of it and then sit there and complain about it. How are you going to keep them out, board. Captain Jack? What? How are you going to keep them out? Well, quit going up there and advertising on television for one thing and tell them to come down here. There's too damn many up that's here now. That's primarily tourism, well, Captain Jack. That's, shut up, Lionel. That's primarily tourism, those ads. We're talking about people moving here. How are you going to keep them out? I don't want the tourists or the people that are moving here. They're, 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 they're killing my state. They're ruining my state. My people were in this state even when it was under Spain. These are the people that come down from oh, the Carolinas yeah. and Georgia and all and, it and fought all the wars and made this state, and now we're being outnumbered by these people that don't give a goddamn about this state. Carolyn, is it time to post a not welcome sign at the border? No, it is not. And I would point out to you that uh, Captain Jackoff doesn't know the difference between tourism and aliens. The hell I don't. You're an alien, Carolyn. Yeah, you're, you're, you're from another You're a plant. moron, Rocky. You're from hold Russia. on there. Hold on there, Carolyn. You say it's not time don't to keep them out, but you, you've got Lionel. to know about all the problems that we have I with do. the overpopulation. 
I do know about the problems. So what's if the I solution? Can deal with the, if I can deal with the problem of natives like Rocky and Jackoff, I can certainly deal with the problems of aliens. Yeah, but you don't need Rocky. You do need water, Carolyn. I don't Here. think I don't think our water supply is going to be any okay, more affected by the tourists who come from the north to Florida. Not talking about the, the tourists. Not talking world. about it's the tourists, paper, Carolyn. You're talking just about lying. Shut up. Shut it's up. In the paper. We ain't got enough water here now. Rocky, please. shut up. I'll what get to you in a crack. moment. Carolyn, not talking about the tourists, talking about the immigrants. That's right. It, the immigrants do not affect more the water supply in the state of Florida than the Hundreds of thousands Hell, I don't of, of no people from the north who come down here every year, and I include myself in that. That that, that That's a buzzword. It doesn't mean anything. Rocky, are you in favor of posting a not welcome sign at the border? I'm posting that uh, no northerners, no more neo-carpet baggers should come to this state. I think they have destroyed this nation. We used to live in harmony here, and they come down here with their lifestyle of murder and mayhem, and now it's not murder. safe to walk the streets. They talk about all the money the tourists come in. Sure, they bring about $300 million a year. But how much money do they bring into the thievery and monstrousism that these Yankees come down here? And they, they come down here and yeah. do nothing but complain. And Carolyn, you ain't from here. You're from Hazard County, Kentucky. Why don't you get up there, back up there in the cold Rocky, mine? And, there is and no such place as Hazard County, Kentucky. Why don't you Kentucky. go back over there to Israel, wherever you're from? Oh. And rip off somebody in Bhopal, India. Lionel, are you going hey, to join hey, in? Hey, Lionel, hey, shut up, gang. What you doing over here? Gang, hold it down. Hold it down, Rocky. Rocky, Rocky I'm going to put you on hold if you don't keep quiet there. Lionel, are you going to join Rocky with a not welcome sign? Yes, at the border. But the sign's going to be facing Florida. And it will say, Rockhead and Jackoff, See not that? wanted. Get That's out. That, right. That's right. Throw us out of our own state. Yeah, throw us out of our own state. You and you yeah. morons, We were born and raised here, boy. You come we down here want talking you. your trash. We want people we, with intelligence This soul is in our blood. This soul is in our blood. You've destroyed You have destroyed it. You couldn't make it your own state. You to run down here. There's no got thrown out of Kentucky. got thrown out of Issue number 12, Moments away. If you've been waiting for an unforgettable... Tonight from the city by the... Issue number 12. Talk radio in Tampa Bay. Unlike talk radio anywhere in the country. A very distinct personality all of its own. To the last of the group, I would ask, what's right with it? What's wrong with it? Is it time? Has the time come to get rid of the chronic regular callers? Carolyn, talk radio. What's right? What's wrong? What's right about talk radio is that it gives asses like your two guests, Rocky and um, Captain Jack, the right to yeah, express their opinions. What's Hold also, on, respect. What's Hold also on there, right, Rocky. What's also right about it is that it substitutes the town hall, the opportunity to express one's opinion and to exchange opinions. She's reading out of ebony. I read out of nothing. <laughs> Keep quiet, gentlemen. Go on, Carolyn. What's wrong with it? Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, go ahead. All right. What's wrong with it is that if you have a talk host whose own basic insecurity overwhelms his or her desire to hear different opinions and to have them exchanged, then that is wrong. A talk host, in my opinion, should not only be well-informed, but should have a sense of humor about what talk radio is. Isn't this special? Rocky, talk radio, what's right, what's wrong? Is the time to get rid of the chronics? I don't think there's a time. I don't believe that we should screen people from calling in. I mean, here I am sitting to a, a couple of communist sympathizers that don't really care about the nation. All they care about the money. That and us too, Rocky. Hold on, Lionel. You'll get your chance. And I, I believe that uh, there's a lot of jealousy being brought not only to the callers, but the actual <laughs> talk show host. I've been banned from many stations in the past. And, uh, Lionel, if I've been listening to the, this program and the other pro program for two weeks now, and I've heard nothing but Lionel scream and holler about how he's going to kill me and all this. Well, I, I come on this one thing for one... I, I come on today to give you a favor. Look, I'm no better than anybody else. I'm just like everybody else. Oh, I'm just your average, average, everyday American citizen who wants to keep law and order in hand. I am a neo-American nationalist, and I'm proud of... Great, but what's right and what's wrong with talk radio? I think what's wrong with talk radio is 
screening and banning people that the talk show hosts don't have the guts to listen to because they're afraid they're going to ask them a question they can't answer. Are you defending yeah, yeah. Lionel? Are you defending Lionel Rocky? Here, I'm defending Rocky on that one. You better believe it. I agree 100% with that. Who asked him? Lionel, time. what's right, what's wrong with the business in general? Who, me? Yeah. First of all, we got the wrong people doing talk shows. We got people who get on here who think talk radio is some insipid announcer getting on and talking for four hours. Now, you are right. Wait now, a second. I'm the only guy in town that does four hours. Are you taking cheap shots at me? I'm sorry. Three hours. Pardon me. Pardon me for mother. living, okay? Well, let me tell you something about the regular callers. The regular callers are the lifeblood to your station. If you want to listen to... Wait a second. You want to tell me that Mona and Dwight are the lifeblood at WFLA? If you want to listen to the insipid dribble that normally comes across the show about, I've got a wonderful tapioca recipe, Bob, and all of that, fine. Then I'm going to another country to listen to another radio station. Rocky and Carolyn and I, and this is the only time I'll agree with you, I think add vitality to this. There are people out there who identify with us. We are a microcosm. We are the blood that surges through the veins of America. We are a metamorphosis of talk show talkers. Oh, my and God, I think we're all in trouble. Off, if you cut us off, you're cutting your gonads off. Because yeah. now, below the belt at again. least you've got enough class. And to uh, jack off, you just knew you're a new kid. You know, you've got to make your way up the ladder like we have. Okay? But isn't it funny it's that out of millions I of people it. that populate this community... If you mention any of our names, you'll get recognition. More so than Sandy Friedman, the mayor. Now then why don't you use your real name, Lionel? Let me in on this. Okay, I Captain Jack, what's name. right, what's wrong with talk first, radio? First of all, I'm not on here to be recognized. And, and, and secondly, the problem with talk radio is not the people that call in. The problem with talk radio is these people that host these programs. Now, I've done a little research on this, and I understand there's about... 50 stations or something, or 50 more at, that handle these programs in the country. And I found out, I made a little trip up to New Jersey. I went into Collinsworth, and I couldn't find no Bob Laster. I couldn't find no... It's Collinswood, Captain I Jack. Find, I've heard him lie about your education and your work history. And I found a Boris Lasterovich. Uh, it looks to me like could be possibly dumped on this uh, shore off of a... Captain of Jack, a first of all, it's Collinswood. I've given my real name. I've, and I don't lie about my education because I've admitted that I used to. I've, I've heard, I've heard the, the, the man state that there, he has no morals, there's no respect for the flag, no respect for the president, no respect for religion, bi, uh, Bible bashing, has no heritage, has no children. These are dangerous people. These, uh, and, and in Miami, there's a faggot down there, the same thing. And I have a feeling if we did a little investigation, we'd find this in, in every big city metropolis where these people like this Carolyn and Lyle who have this big city city complex don't know a damn thing about the country you're I think, jealous i think it's a plot i think it's a plot, it's a plot it's a to brainwash us you're jealous jack off because you Show realize yourself. you're an ignorant redneck ignorant ignorant you don't know Stupid. what the word ignorant Show means some respect, i, 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 I wasn't trained Show by a lawyer child here the latter group will continue issue number 13 Ted Kennedy recently quoted as saying, I don't think about being president anymore. I don't think about it any less either. Will the time ever, ever be right for Ted Kennedy, Lionel? No, never. Why not? I can't stand the Kennedys. Well, besides the fact them. that you can't stand them, how many voters do you think you influence? Many, many people agree with me. Ted Kennedy, through his history has shown people that he's not, he does not have the medal. Mm -hmm. Despite I, the fact that I do agree with him in many instances, but I don't think he has that medal, that je ne sais quoi, the sine qua non, to be president. I don't think he'll ever be able to get over Chappaquiddick, so long as morons like Rockhead and Jackoff remember it. And not only that, I think aside from that, I don't think he has the temerity. What about if the country goes into a, what about if the country goes into a terrible economic tailspin? Is there anybody else out there that can that can raise up the emotion of the American people like Ted Kennedy? Gary Hart. Ah, oh, give me a break, Lionel. Gary Hart. This is a joke it. show. Gary Hart was our only chance. <laughs> Gary Hart's too much of an intellectual. He doesn't inspire any emotion or passion. Oh, I know, and that and that rubs against the grain with Rockhead and Jacob. God forbid we should get an intellectual. 
We we need somebody like George Wallace or Lester Maddox. David Duke. Do you think David Kennedy was? Do you think that Ted Kennedy was David just? David Kennedy's dead, Bob. Do you think that Ted Kennedy was just being humorous when he said, "I don't think about being president anymore. I don't think about it any less either." Ted Kennedy being humorous? Yeah, was that an attempt at humor, or is he serious? Only if you laugh, Bob. Captain Jack, <laughs> will the time ever come for Ted Kennedy? Ted Kennedy is a disgrace to this nation, just like that other creep from uh, up in Massachusetts, that Tip O'Neill. I don't think Rocky's from Massachusetts. What? I don't think Rocky's from Massachusetts. I said Tip O'Neill. Oh. <laughs> Kennedy, Kennedy is a joke. He's sitting up there right now just laughing himself silly. He's a, he's a rotten, he comes from a family. Of, What's he, he laughing about, he, Captain he, Jack? He's, he's, he's from a family of whiskey peddlers that made millions of dollars in duping the people. He's a, he's a part of this new breed that coming to this country. Wait a second, Captain Jack. Haven't you, ever, haven't you ever tipped up a grog of, uh, of rum or so, you know? Yes, but that, that, didn't come from, that didn't come from the Kennedys. We made our own. You made your own rum. Yes. Time will never be right for Kennedy. Right, Captain Jack? Yes. Kennedy, the time for him is to sit up there and let those idiots in the North keep electing him up there and creating problems in our country. Carolyn, will the time ever be right for Kennedy? Never. Why? Because I agree with everything which Lionel said that Kennedy did not possess, and I would include savoir faire. How much does Chappaquiddick play in it? A great part. All of it? Could Not he be president it. if it wasn't for Chappaquiddick? I doubt that. Because I don't think Teddy Kennedy has the intestinal fortitude for the job. Should he crawl back in a hole and just leave public life? Absolutely not. He's doing a great job as a senator, and I'm 100,000% with him in the need for a national health program. Touche. Rocky, the entire Bay Area waits breathlessly for your answer. Will Teddy Kennedy ever have his turn? Well, according to Mr. Gorbachev and Mr. Castor, they say he's doing a fine job, too. And I'd like to say that since Carolyn just agreed with Lionel... Lionel when did Gorbachev, when did Gorbachev or Castor say right. that, Rocky? Just What's Carolyn your source? agreed with Lionel, and Lionel just told a lie under his... He just said that people like me and Jack will never forget about the Chapa Whittick incident. Or the Chapa just, Whittick either. Or he just, Lionel just said that we, uh, he could never forget Pat Robertson for what he done. Right. So yeah. I don't think that, uh, yeah. Mr. I don't think that, uh, Mr. Robertson has got any drowned women under the bridge. And if you like him so much, Carolyn, why don't you go on a long bridge ride with him? Yeah. And I'll supply the Jack Daniels. I didn't say I liked him. Of course, course, you just said you liked him. I did. You're a liar. You ought to get good. You're a liar. You're a moron. You're a moron. You're a good, like most comedy. You're a moron. No wonder you're not in the Soviet Union. They put you over here because you couldn't make it over there. Well, wait a second, group. Let me jump in here. If not Ted Kennedy, then where is the next great liberal politician going to come from who could capture oh the White God, House? we got plenty of them. we got an abundant supply of them. Name one. Well, we got Jesse Jackson. He's a liberal. Jesse Jackson is not going to be president. You know that, Rocky. Who is well, why is it? Why what liberal up? has why the potential? What liberal the has the potential Mario for capturing Cuomo. the White House? Mario Cuomo. Mario Cuomo. Cuomo. Yeah, that's what we need. A New York Mario Cuomo. Cuomo. Get the mafia in there now. Now you get the mafia. <laughs> <laughs> now the, mafia. Like the guy that gets up on the flag and waves the American flag and follows engines built in Japan. Yeah. Mitsubishi builds the Chrysler engines, you idiot. Yeah. Mario Cuomo. argument. To run this country. Mario Cuomo. You want you want hey, we got a choice between a slumlord and a hoodlum. Who do we, who do we want? Don't How about you, Carolyn? Why don't you run? Are you kidding me? I would Why run. don't you run, Carolyn? Women, I am not are you afraid to go back to your number 14? Pat Schroeder shed tears when she pulled out of the presidential campaign. The people of the nation said. Women just are not strong enough to be president. Are they, Lionel? Absolutely they're strong enough to be president. Do you know that in the XY chromosome that oh, makes God. men men, do you know that the Y chromosome is genetically innate? Oh, Women are the ones, if they are not possessed with more power, more strength, then why do they live longer than men? Why don't their hair fall out? Because oh. they don't work for a living. Shut up, Rocky. Do. 
The only reason that men have throughout history been, quote, superior to women is that physically we can beat them up. But, Lionel, but it, appears as, it appears as though the greatest amount of criticism toward Pat Schroeder came from women. Came from women. Insipid little housewives who believed that the moronic rhetoric expounded by Jackoff and Rockhead. Women's worst enemies are, are women. women. Not men, women. Women are vicious against Stand women. By. There is an underculture of women who want to keep the feminine sex uh suppressed. It's the same reason why more black people kill black people. I don't understand why. Pat Schroeder went on television and made the big mistake of showing emotion, showing that she was a human being. Not crying in the middle of a debate, but crying when she was backing out. And you know who came against her? You moron, Rocky. I'm gonna shove something so far up. <laughs> Pat Schroeder showed emotion, and you know who came up? You know who it was? Who gave her the, the biggest... Uh, Don't keep us in suspense. Women. Thank you, Lionel. Captain Jack. I'm going to break it off in you, Rocky. Captain oh. Jack, how about it? Are women strong enough? Well, hell no, women aren't strong enough. When this, this, this Pat Schroeder got up there, <laughs> women, these women that belong to these organizations, if they, these now they're all ugly to start with. If it is <laughs> If they stayed in the kitchen and raised their children and stay home, first of all, we wouldn't even have any unemployment. People, men aren't going to vote for women, and the women aren't going to vote for women either. Wait a second, Captain Jack. Do you mean you might be willing to take a job as a chambermaid? I, I don't. I, I got enough money. I don't have to take a job. Well, I thought you were a working man, Captain Jack. I've got ships. I got boats. But I don't have to. I don't have to take no job as no chambermaid. Carolyn, are women strong enough? You bet. We're strong enough. We're intelligent enough. We can be president. Didn't and a woman is going to be president. Didn't one Pat day. Schroeder know it was going to cost her through the teeth to sit there or stand there and weep? She may not have known it was going to cost her through her teeth because she's intelligent. Hey, but it was people like Rocky and Jackoff who would vote against her because Bob. she cried. But let me say this. I have heard the women who castigated Schroeder for crying. They're all ugly. And they all sound like... A bull moose with his member caught in a buzz saw. She's, in the, she's lower belt again. Bob, in a member. what, Lionel? You you know what's wrong with this country? We hate crying. When Edmund Muskie stood on the steps and Democrat, cried, Democrat. that ruined him. Rocky. When, but when Ronald Reagan went to see the family members of the Marines who were killed in Lebanon, and he cried like a baby. Nobody ever said anything about that. They never word. equated that with weakness. Don't he equated cry. that with sympathy. And how you two redneck boneheads can't see the difference between... Well, that hold on there. Mind. Hold on there, Lionel Rocky. Will there well, ever know, be a woman president? A point because you've been crying for the last two hours. Since Will the there ever started. be a woman president, Rocky? Well, do I think that women could play the part... Well, you got to stop and think. If we, you know, I know a, a, a woman called Harleen Mahoney. Now, she's stronger than any, any man you'll ever meet. She's a big old strapping woman. She's a Swedish woman. She's 6'6", six, six, and she weighs 300 pounds. She's a pretty good old rugged girl, and she happens to be from Harlan County. What'd you vote for her, Rocky? Uh, she's a redneck. And now she's a type that take Lionel and put him over her knee and slap the crap Would you out of vote him. for her, Rocky? And I might, I might vote for Harleen uh, Mahoney or somebody like, like that. Is, is there any, is there any woman in politics, like Rocky? Is there any woman in politics or public life that you could vote for for president? You know, such as uh, Jane Kirkpatrick. Oh God, give me a break! Oh uh, no, I wouldn't vote for her. I Why wouldn't not? Vote for Pat Schroeder. I wouldn't vote vote for Shirley Chisholm. Why wouldn't you vote for, uh... I might vote for Raquel, Raquel Welch because I could sit there and look at her and maybe Dolly Parton. Would you vote for your mother, Rocky? Do you have a I mother, Rocky? Have a mother. Yeah, do you have one? Listen to that. That's rotten. Would you vote for your own mother is my question. What the hell's wrong with that, Jack? Off? Is that too tough? No, it's just it's just hitting below the belt. That's, that's all you do is hit below the belt. And if Rocky's the mother belt. is well, anything like him. If there was like something him. to hit below the belt, I'd, I'd do it. Who would vote for that? But you're a spineless, gonadless dork who just got on today, and I'm still waiting for you to say something intelligent. If I gives me the chance, I will. 
Let's hear it. Captain Jack, you've got the floor. Say something intelligent. I'm waiting. Shut up, the rest of you. Captain Jack has the floor. Say something intelligent. You're a bull dyke. Shut up, Lionel. Shut up, Rocky. Captain Jack's got the floor to say something intelligent. Come mierda. Shut up, everybody. Captain Jack, say something intelligent. I am going to say something. I've done a little research on this Rocky character who claims to be a lawyer. And the only thing that Rocky's this guy... a lawyer? Yeah, hey, hey. That's okay. I accept your I know apology. this is tough, Jack. I'll never call me a lawyer. The only training he ever had was by lawyer Calhoun on the old Amos and Andy show. This guy works out of a phone booth down on Dale Mabry in Nebraska Avenue. That's he's a, a lie. Chaser, and he lives on funds he's cheated little old ladies that's out of. And he publicly stated on the air that he voted for, for Jesse Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> The most stupid? Yes, he was stupid in Beirut. He was stupid on Grenada, and he is, I assure you, stupid in the Persian Gulf. The only reason that Ronald Reagan sent Americans into the Persian Gulf is because he sold arms to the Ayatollah. And when he found out that another country went to the Soviet Union for help in the Persian Gulf, then Ronald Reagan said, oh, we've got to get over there. We've got to stop the commies in the Persian Gulf. And you know what's fascinating? The Soviet Union and the United States are now sharing intelligence against the, the Iranian fundamentalists. It's stupid. Captain Jack, is it worth the risk in the Persian Gulf? What do you think about the fact that we're buddying up with the Soviets on this? Fine. It's exactly what needs to be done, and everything Carolyn said was a ball-faced lie. Right. The United States is in there. England's in there. France is in there. Germany's in there. Italy. Hallelujah. Italy is the, Captain there. Jack, Hallelujah. Italy, Italy today is debating whether or not to pull out. Well, let me tell you what's going to happen. Eventually, this is going to bring the United States and Russia closer together. They're going to go in there and wipe all those Arabs out, take that oil away from them, and then we won't have to worry about them. That's what's going to happen. Is that moral, Captain Jack? It's perfectly moral. To steal moral. people's oil? That's perfectly moral. Why perfectly is it moral? moral? Yes, sir. What makes it moral? Because there are certain things you have to do, and when you have to do it, don't pussyfoot around, get in there and get it done. And that's what needs to be done. We're playing games then over Then are there. you ready to call Ronald Reagan a yellow-bellied sap sucker for not doing it? Who? Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan's no dummy. Ronald Reagan started out. No, he's a moron. Out. He's got all the rest up in there with him now. He's got them all in there. There's more coming every day. We're going to clean that eye toward his plow. No way. We're going to take care of the rest of them there. Guys that run around. Lionel, is it worth the risk in the Persian Gulf? Of 42 course, dead God. already. There's only one reason we're there, and that's for oil. And what we're doing oh. is we're trying to watch behind our backs to make sure the Iranians don't shoot us oh. with the same missiles that we that sold we them. them. So we're going to be shot by our own weapons while morons and cretins like you and Rockhead think it's great because if Ronald Reagan dropped his pants and defecated on Main Street, you'd jump up and down saying, God bless America. Touché. Because you're mindless. You don't have a single thought independent in your head. Then what's the solution over there, Lionel? The hell with the solution. Back off. That's you right. want to start out. a war over this? If we've got France and Germany, great. Let those people do sure. something for once. God knows we busted our butt for them. We don't need to be out there. And when we get another 400 American kids killed over there because of a mine or whatever, I want you to call back and I want you to call all of the family members and explain that your son lost his young life because for oil. Coward. And he was shot Coward. by a missile right. from Iran that we sold them. Rocky, 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 like Rocky 42 people. Coward. Shut up, guys. Never Rocky, 42 guys are dead already. How many more in the Persian Gulf? Why don't y'all show us some southern manners, the southern people here, that you, some of you Yankees got manners. Forty-two oh, men are I'm dead, Rocky. Yankee. How many more before we cut and run? None. None what? What? None what? 
No more dead. Rocky, you have no control over that. How many yeah, lives are you willing to risk to make a point in the Persian Gulf? Hey, Lionel, why don't you go eat some popcorn out of How here? many so lives, Rocky? Get... Shut up, Lionel. Hey, Lionel. Lionel, hush what? up. Hey, Lionel, why don't you Rocky, go eat some popcorn Rocky, how many out of lives... Box. Rocky, up. how many lives are you willing to risk to make a point in the Persian Gulf? Look, we found that oil. We, refound, we refined the oil. We found it, and we showed them people... How, how many lives, money. Rocky? Find how many American boys are you willing to waste? I say we waste. go in there tonight and blow them up. Right. Answer the question, bonehead. Whatever it takes. I'm answering the question. question. See, see, we go in there tonight and blow them up. Uh, Bob, don't leave this. Bob, I won't. We can take many the gun down there and bomb them. We can take the Mississippi National How Guard and go in there and clean them out. How many lives, you ignorant as morons, many, you. As many as it takes. What? They as will many not answer. It take. Yeah, let's send you over there on the first boat, Lionel. Let's, let's, let's give you a rifle and send you over there first. I want you right next to me. Our people have lost their lives in every damn war. But lives don't mean that much. This is we not a war, cause. Jack. Li li Whoa, Captain what? Jack, lives don't mean that much? No, sir, not when we got a cause. That's oh, right. Oh. Our people go in there. We're not cowards. We don't run. We get in there and get the job done. Right that you down, Bob. Jack. Hey, the country comes. Hey, That's right. Hey, the country comes first. You're not Mrs. Mahoney's little boy that got shot by a bullet. 150 the time. Issue number 16 coming your way. New York. Issue number 17. The people still like Ronald Reagan, but the people don't like Ronald Reagan's policies. When it comes to giving him a vote of confidence or being a nice guy... Close to 60% say he's a nice guy, but when it comes time to backing his views and policies, the American people back away. Is the time right? Is the time right for a move to the left in this country? Carolyn? Absolutely. The time is right for a move to the left, and when I say that, I do not mean the extreme left. But the time is right in our country, as was just uh, demonstrated. Are you talking about middle of the road then? I am talking about left of center, and if you have any question about that, you should tally up the vote against Bork. Rocky, is the time right for a move to the left? Remember this about Bork in the Senate. The majority of people is not always right, Carolyn. Remember that. That's common sense, but that's something you're It is you're not lacking. the Senate I'm speaking of. It is the American people who spent our hard-earned money to call our senators and to write letters to tell them that we did not want a right-wing zealot to sit on the Supreme you know, Court who has to look lady, into the Constitution for your United right States and mine to privacy. Forget the senators. I don't like the system, okay? Rocky, then forget Carolyn. It. Forget Carolyn for the moment. Is All the right. time right for a move to the left? Reagan. What we need is a hardcore redneck in there to tell people where to go when oh, the time great. gets... But there David. is no heir apparent, Rocky. I don't want a man David. with morals in there. I Rocky, there is redneck. no heir apparent. There is no one on the right who is capturing the nation's fancy. Is the nation ready to move to the left, like it or not? No, we're not ready to move to the left. Mm. We're too much to the left now. You're wrong. Captain Jack, what do you have to say on that? Well, I guess when Carolyn campaigned for Shirley Chisholm, she'd like to see her in there. I didn't oh, campaign just, for yeah, her. Yeah, that's where she learned in Grambling, where she went to school, took basket weaving. Captain oh, Jack, cheap I'm... shot to Carolyn aside. The fact of the matter is there is no heir apparent. Heir, heir, yeah, heir apparent. There, will there is no one on the right that has captured the nation's fancy the way Ronald Reagan did. Is it time for a move to the left? No, it's not time for a move to the left. And these, these polls are taken by a uh, press that takes these polls, go into the black community and pick names out of phone books that you can't even spell or pronounce and ask them these questions. What the hell do you expect? Yes, you can't pronounce Dallas names like world? Brown and Johnson, Captain Jack? Do who? Brown and Johnson. You have uh, trouble with names like that? Mooka, mooka, boogie, boogie, eh? Yeah. Those types. Lionel, is it time for a move to the left? No, it's a time to move back to reality, not this right... Is wing left reality? Left. What? Is left reality? Not left always. Reality. Not always, but the pendulum is swinging back at least to the midpoint. It will then go a little bit to the left, and it will balance out where it should be. Not all left, not all right. Issue number... 17. Are people like the rock and roll Klansmen dinosaurs destined for obscurity, Lionel? At dinosaurs? You're the duck-billed platypus incarnate. I'm you a duck-billed platypus. 
you are emblematic of a mentality that has went out with Gone with the Wind. Wait a second. Are you talking to me or are you talking to Rocky? I'm talking to Rocky. Oh. Rocky is an abomination. Rocky is absolutely the most, to me... Well, aside from that, is he a example. dinosaur? Dinosaur, yes. Pre-dinosaur. I'm talking about the little nymphs that crawled out of the ocean during the primordial ooze and the Big Bang. He's not Neanderthal. He's primordial. He is the last vestige of a demented and psychotic way of thinking that I hope this country never sees. And Jack is one step behind that. Captain Jack, are people like Rocky dinosaurs destined for nothing? No, and this goes back to your question you asked previously about talk radio. If, if, if this station and the other stations allow uh, people like me and Rocky to get on here where we can talk to the people out there uh, uh, pertaining to our country, uh, I think we're going to swing a lot of people because Rocky's a descendant from the people who made this country. He's a, he's a descendant of the people who fought the wars and conquered conquered the wilderness. And look, and, this, and, then, and then we have these I people like that, that motor mouth that's talking now who arrived here who don't give a damn about our Just country. The only thing they want is Get Are you a dissenter? There. He's a dissenter. No, I didn't dissent? interrupt you. Why are Wait you in it? Why are you interrupting me? Are you saying descendant or dissenter? Shut it's up, Lionel. Look at the man on the floor, you Yankee. You it's heard you, what you I said. Let him talk. You, these, these, these people like this Lionel S. Carolyn, they weren't worth a damn when they got here, and they're not worth a damn now. Carolyn is Rocky. Two, and is Rocky and his kind? Is he a dinosaur? Rocky and his friend Jack predate dinosaurs, and I would say that they have not evolved to that stage yet. And I would also like to point out to all the people who are listening to this program that Rocky has told outright lies. First of all, there's no hazard county, Kentucky. Filthy, 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 filthy. That's filthy. on shame, television. Shame, shame, yeah. Shut up, moron. Why don't you write Ann Lanners and learn how to speak on the hazard phone? Hazard, Kentucky is a town. It's spelled with one Z. It's a small town. My ancestors, my, all of my ancestors came here on the Mayflower. Oh, and Rocky, Carolyn, whoopee, whoopee, Carolyn, Carolyn, so that makes everything and Rocky would okay. try, Rocky would try till hell froze over Time to is... say that I did not have every qualification to be a member of his putrid clan. I have a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant female who was born and reared in the South, but I have an wow, IQ over Mammy. 60. Traitor. Carolyn, Carolyn, and time is of the essence. Rocky, are you a dinosaur? Uh, today I'm a dinosaur. Tomorrow I won't be. That's right. Why? Because when the destruction comes from be the evil forces one. within, people will come to my way of thinking. People will be running for the new order. Grunty. People will be running for special interest groups and saying, Idiot. we've made a mistake. That's right. Born. All right, last, last segment of the program. Fifteen seconds, each and every one of you, for what else, since I'm ripping it off? Predictions. Carolyn, let me start with you. My prediction is that this era of what is called conservatism, but which is not, in fact, it is, in my opinion, Time right is of the essence, Carolyn, the right prediction. Right-wing zealotry is gone. Captain Jack, your prediction. I predict that the white Christian people who made this country in this area are going to learn that there's two types of white people in this country and that these white people, such as this Lionel and Carolyn, who are the ones What's who have the caused our trouble with the blacks, they're going to wise up and we're going to be get this country back where it belongs. Lionel, your prediction. My prediction is that within five years, Rockhead and Jackoff will both receive lobotomies and finally understand just exactly how stupid they've been. Lionel, the you're, years. Lionel I'm sorry. Uh, Rocky, your prediction. My prediction is that all children are not bad, and I hope and pray that no children will go hungry tonight, and that we can all live to learn to live in harmony. Thank you, Rocky. History has been made. The Lassiter Group is no more. Eight minutes after the hour of 2 o'clock, I am exhausted. Friday, October the 9th, 1987. Lasseter with you until 4 as I am every weekday right here at the Talk of Tampa Bay, WFLA. If you have any compassion, if you have any sympathy, any understanding in your hearts, you will call. You've heard of people begging for calls before. I'm not, even, I'm not taking any chances. I am begging because I am beat, 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 beat. My head hurts. I will entertain any topic under the sun. I have no shame whatsoever. And today I have even less. The 
Lassiter Group. Something I've wanted to do for a long time. But there are many things I've wanted to do for a long time. Let me give you the... Call Lionel a Jewish lawyer. That's true. Now, I have reason to believe that he's not really a Jewish lawyer. He is a lawyer, but I don't believe he's Jewish. So what I'd like to propose is that he be made an honorary Jewish lawyer. An honorary Jewish lawyer. Right. Well, I don't really have any control over that, but, I, you know, it's, it's okay with me. Well, you, you know, basically... It's okay with him. The guy can't tolerate bigotry and stupidity, and that probably qualifies him. You know, you may have a point there. Now, I don't know if he wants to become the real thing, because I don't know if he can handle the initiation ceremony. Well, he may have already gone through it. You never know. But... Aside and I don't want to know either. Huh? And I don't want to know either. He might tell you if you ask him. Well, I, 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 I'm not going to ask him. Okay. In any, in It'll any be his event, secret. That's, that's a suggestion of mine. And if you ever, or when you speak to him again, see if he's interested in. Did you listen? This honor. Did you listen to the entire two hours? A good part of it. Why? I was just fascinated by the whole thing. Fascinated. What was it that fascinated you the most? Just the total clash of uh, to you know, totally irre irreconcilable differences. There was no way that you could get agreement between the two sides. I would have thought that the, the only hope for getting four outrageous egotists in the one room would be, be get, would be to put four talk show hosts into one room. No way. No way. Think, Far greater think, egos. That wouldn't have equaled this. And it wasn't a question of ego. It was a question of basically immovable positions. Thank you, Jerry. You're thoroughly welcome. Bob. Appreciate. Hillsborough, nice. Comment on your two hours. Go past. for it. Uh, I got to congratulate you. It was very interesting. I uh, listened to the entire two hours. And uh, I, I think the reason I did it, I agree with Jerry what he just said. It's Rocky says, I think that was a terrific program, one of the best I've ever heard, and you were great as an MC. I really enjoyed it. I sat there, part of the time I laughed. I never enjoyed anything so much. I wish you could have this at least once a week. Oh, never, never. Oh, I know it's hard on you. I realize that, but I just love Carol and, and Lionel. I'm, right now, I feel like I do at the end of a very I tough four-hour program. I thought of that. After those two hours, I thought, I wonder how Bob feels now. He's I'm um, just I really enjoyed it. I wish you could have something at least similar to it sometimes, once a month maybe. I may do it again in the future, possibly with a different cast of characters. Oh, I think it was great. I haven't enjoyed anything like that for a long time. Well, I'm glad you did, Mary. Say it happy birthday. Well, yeah. thank you. How are you going to tap this one? I don't know. Uh, well, I was very disappointed in Car Carolyn and Lionel. Why? Well, for two people that are supposed to be so intelligent and educated... I thought that they really did themselves a disservice by coming down to a Neanderthal level to compete with those other two fools. Mm. And I really thought that, you know, Lionel was going to blow them out of the water. But for two smart people, they blew it. You think so? I think they really blew it. In my book, they did. But no, I don't. frankly, I really didn't. If, uh, if I'd have had those four people and they were my four kids, I'd have beat the hell out of all of them and put them all in their bedrooms. Well, there is something I should tell the audience. Uh, I did not speak with any of them prior to the program, except on the air when you heard me set it up, they had no idea what was coming next. Zero. Uh, they had not even five seconds worth of notice as to what the issues and topics would be, and obviously some of them were kind of silly and frivolous, others, others were rather serious and to the point. So uh, from that point of view, from that aspect, from that angle, I think they all did fantastically because they had no idea what was coming next. Well, they sure showed their true colors, that's for sure. I'm not sure I could have handled all of those things just thrown at me and said, okay, great, start talking for 90 seconds. I think you could have handled them, but I don't think that you would have gone through the screaming escapades that was going on there that you just kept shouting and What, are you shouting. a new listener or something? Pardon? What, are you a new listener? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I mean, you do, but I've, there's a, <laughs> there are times, though, when you get on one-on-one -on -one to somebody head-to-head, -head, I mean, you've got no problem with holding your own with anybody. And you can do it real smart, you know, without all the annex, too, at times to try to catch that show. Sounds like my kind of radio. <laughs> 21 minutes. Those first two hours, I just sat here and counted up coffee. 13 cigarettes and two cups of coffee. Tony in Clearwater. Hi, Tony. You're on the air at WFLA. Yes, I know how you can top 
the last two hours. Uh, how, how's that, Tony? Just include Bubba next time you have the, uh, the four of them. I don't know what happened to Bubba. He's kind of disappeared. Oh, sorry to hear that. Well, okay. Bye. Thanks, Tony. It's probably Bubba. Yeah, it's not all kinds of things. I tell you, sir, it was open for so two things I wanted to say. Sure, what's that? Uh, Storm and Norman seems like a real nice guy, but he's he's more effective than a bottle of Sleepy's. You're kidding. I, t- I tell you why. What, do you like You like to sleep by the sound of a buzzsaw? <laughs> but I tell you why I've got that theory. I think because you said he's producer and what have you. You know, maybe he doesn't need the calls, but he just, he gets on his soapbox and he won't get off. Oh, God, you should have to hear him in staff meetings. He goes, drones on for hours. <laughs> so maybe there's a little truth in there. Huh? You know, at least here he takes commercial breaks, but not uh, not in the meeting. This goes on and on and on and on. <laughs> oh, it's awful, man, awful. I feel sorry for callers. He must wait for hours. But I'm, I'm just a little worried about you. You know, he puts you to sleep? Yeah, I, I'm... Put you to grow up next to a sawmill? Uh, well, I tell you, I, I'm not going to listen to it anymore. He seems like a real nice guy, but he's just so boring and, and drawn out and, you know, he's like... He's not boring. He's anything but. Well, uh, start calling him Storm and Norman, because... Uh, he, need, he needs a rain cloud over him, something. No, I'll pass it along. You said you had a second issue. Yeah. Yeah, Bob. I'd like to know where uh, Bullwinkle is with Rocky the Squirrel. Bullwinkle with Rocky the Squirrel? I don't my understand. Children, my children used to listen to those cartoons on te- or watch TV there and watch those cartoons. and that's you're, you're, You are not going to try to equate Rocky and Bullwinkle with the Lasseter group, I hope. That would be a terrible slight against Rocky and Bullwinkle, a very high-level show. Well, I hate to see it... Uh, uh, related with the last of the show, but uh, that's what he is. He's a squirrel, and he needs Bullwinkle with him. Rocky was a very, very sharp squirrel, much sharper than Rocky the Rock and Roll Klansman. Yeah, Rocky also very liberal, too. Was sharp, too. Pardon? Rocky on the short, uh, cartoons was sharp, too. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's much sharper than Rocky the Rock and Roll Klansman, and he was also very liberal, too. That's true. Well, listen, uh, I had one other thing I want to say. Uh... The uh, people here in uh, Florida, the drivers uh, on the roads have uh, the mentality of squirrels, I'll tell you, because uh, I worked on the road. Uh, Again, why are, you out, why are you being so rough on the squirrels today? Uh, uh, my dog is uh, upset. She, there's one that teases her all the time, and doesn't, I don't like to see my dog uh, upset. I don't know. I think you're just being vicious on the poor squirrels today, comparing them with, you know, the rock and roll Klansmen and Florida drivers. Well, the Florida drivers are the worst ones. They're worse than squirrels. Question for uh, the group. Maybe they can answer it at some future date. Yeah, what's that? Well, one for each side. To Rocky and Captain Jack, if your only alternative was to live in a lily all-white country filled with bleeding-heart liberals who you have nothing in common with, or to be the only white family in a totally black country with black people who share the same moral, political, and philosophical values that you do, what would you do? And please pick one. And to Lionel and Carolyn, if they were a black African, and your, all, and your only alternative was to live in right-wing South Africa as a second-class citizen without civil rights or dignity with your children, or to live in Marxist left-wing Ethiopia in the desert watching your children's bodies slowly waste to death by starvation, what would you do and pick one? Impossible questions. Impossible. Good, but no, impossible like questions. What they, how they would answer it. I really would. What do you think they'd say, Dan? I think I'd better wait to listen to hear from them. Okay. Thanks. Temporarily. I'll temporarily. And later when, by temporarily. They, when they get the throne, it'll reverse. That's exactly the way those kind of people do it. Oh, really? Absolutely. It's been done all through history. Where? No. Where, where have, where have moneyed, lazy. where have moneyed people, where have the rich stirred up a socialist revolution? Oh, the French Revolution, uh, the feudal system, the Normandy's conquest of French England. Revolution. Oh, sure. They stir them up, and as soon as they Debbie, you're making them up as you're going along. They change... Bob. Oh, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, the white... See, there, there is no monarchy. Uh, the white... Uh, God, Eastman must really have a grim show today. Uh, the white shouldn't mate with the black. Well, you see, but lions and wolves aren't the same species. Well, well, let me give you an example. I walked in a post office in Lagos, Nigeria. A moron. 
what the hell she's saying. But if it makes sense to you, Debbie, go for it, baby. If it makes sense to you, Debbie. Hi, Bob. I've been listening to your show for quite a while, and um, I was just wondering why you never have Lois from Gulfport on anymore. Because I'm sick and tired of hearing her voice. Don't you think she's, uh, I think she's pretty humorous at times. Great. Um, then when you get a show, you can have her on. Yeah, but I mean, is there any personal reason why you dislike her? I just got finished telling you. You asked me a question, and I gave you an honest answer. I'm sick and tired of hearing her voice. Yeah. She never uh, has anything to add. Uh, what about the liar? How come he hasn't been calling? Beats me. Oh, I was just, yeah, I was just wondering about some of your other callers that you've had on, you know, for quite a while. Seems lately that, I guess it's because of the different time. Maybe they haven't been calling. So, well, I just wanted to know. Okay. Okay, bye. Take care, Art. I did say it was an open program. Bye. You're on the air, WFLA. Hello, hi. Hi. Um, I did not really like your show where all those four people was on Lassiter's Hour or whatever you want to call it. No, it was uh, Lassiter's Group, but uh, uh, why not? Lassiter's Group. Mm -hmm. I think they all was jerks and idiots calling each other names and all. Oh, well, of course, that's why I had them on, Jane. I knew they were all mean, you know, people like that. My story turned so bad. I, I actually went back to my soap opera. No. You don't yeah. like people calling names? Because these people... That's what talk radio is all about. I mean, these people, you know, granted they all have opinion, but they violate each other's rights. Violated each other's rights? I don't think so. I think so. You know, everyone has a right to opinion. Like, I'm seeing my... Well, they all knew that they'd be insulting each other. But, you know, this name con, you know... Oh, it was great. Oh, I don't think so. There's some very creative uh, names in, involved in that. Well, I only listened to about 45 minutes of it, and then I... I thought it was such a circus, I had to turn it off. Okay. Okay? All right, Jane. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I rescheduled my whole day today. I'm a, a home designer up in uh, the Port Ridge area, and uh, I've been working out of my house all day just so I can stay home and listen to the radio. And the, the customer that I was working with happened to walk in, wouldn't you believe, right in the middle of the argument between Carolyn and uh, Rocky. And she said, uh, what is it that you have on the radio there? And I said, well, that's the PTL committee hearings. She said, my God, have they got that violent? I said, <laughs> I said well, that's just normal. I said, I said, well, that's just normal. She said, well, is that on television, too? And I, I said, sure. You know, but I just can't watch and draw at the same time. <laughs> Excuse me. Ah, you're going to kill me there. I gag easily. But anyways, it was... Is that true? I mean, come on. Is that true That now? is the honest truth. And the I poor soul bought it. it for at least a couple of minutes, huh? Hey, I loved it. I thought it was great. If Jim had ever talked to her while he was having sex... Yeah? And he replied, not unless there was a phone nearby. Son of a gun. But the program was tremendous, Bob. Thanks, Bill. And one more comment, too, Bob. Yeah. Just to cap off this whole Bork situation. You're I'm not going to hold your breath, I hope, while you're waiting. No. Nope. For next week. Yes. Scott in Clearwater. Hi, you're on the air at WFLA. Yeah, I'd just like to say uh, I didn't enjoy it. Oh. Uh, Did he poop? He didn't have four intelligent uh, people there. He had four hateful birds. Oh. And uh, if I can get uh, WFLA closed down, I would do it. Oh. That includes uh, the sleazy radio that you produce, I guess. Oh. That you listen to every day and enjoy so much. Oh, you no, miss I don't, one of my Bobby, shows, Scotty. I don't, I don't, really, I don't. Oh, sure you do, Scotty. But uh, you keep it up, Bob. I got you on tape, and we're trying to get a lawyer. Well, and if Mr. you Handy, probably need you know, a lawyer, Scott, you know? If Mr. Handy, if he really is your boss, uh, didn't think to the lowest common denominator for Sleaze Radio, and I guess Paul again. Gonzalez, he's got his next thing will say, oh, October 9th, Bob Gonzalez had his special Lasseter no, group. Bob Lasseter. Bob Lasseter, Scott. I see, Bob Lasseter group, yeah. right. Well, it was, it was meaningless tripe, you know, four hateful birds going at each other. Oh, well, you could have turned on Channel 22 and watched that for a while, Scott. Well, I, I was listening to uh, Dr. Tim LaHaye there for a few minutes. Uh-huh. But uh, basically, talk, about uh, talk radio in our Bay Area seems to be... Please, radio. Aww. Is that it? What 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 would you do differently, Scott? Well, uh, hey, why don't you send a tape and a resume? And I mean, you have such an exciting well, voice and such uh, diverse views. Well, I thought the FCC and their butt to get them to do their job. It doesn't work, Scott. Apparently not. No. Apparently, everybody's uh, irresponsible. No. And they let uh, things go out over the air. 
Like what? Like sleaze, you know. Ah, you mean anything you don't agree with is sleaze. I see. That's an interesting point of view. No, I believe uh, mature individuals would recognize... Oh, Scott, what the hell would you know about a mature sleaze. individual? You're a narrow-minded fool. Keep it up, Bob. Oh, don't you worry about it, Scott. Don't you worry about it for a second. I'll keep it up. Well, just make sure... Uh, you just keep, you just keep wasting your time and your efforts and your money trying to get me off, Scott. I'm not going to waste my money. No money is going to be wasted. Well, I would imagine those 22-cent stamps hurt. No, I haven't mailed any letters to anybody. Why don't you have a job? I do. Well, when do you work? What are you, what are you an overnight guard at the supermarket or something? Well, or friends. You don't even have, why don't you even have some friends? I do have friends. Well, when do you have time for friendship? Because you sit home listening to talk radio night and day. Why don't you clean up your act? My act is as clean as it gets, Scott. No, it is. Very isn't, successful Paul. act. It's a very, very successful act. It, it attracts all kinds of people. Intelligent people, people who aren't so intelligent, and then even those below them, like you. Well, all you call people names me in particular. No, it's not all I do, but it is one of the things that I do very well. Well, see, that's sleazy. No, it's not sleazy. It's, it's just the lowest, a pain in the ass to you. Know, it's the lowest common denominator you can go for. Right. You, know, you can't get people to Hey, listen. Scott, you know, i got to deal with what I had to deal with. Well, I didn't enjoy your program. Oh, well, you never do, Scott. You're a masochist. Have something uninteresting once in a while. <laughs> what, 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 like Dr. LaHaye? Sure. I know what he says. What does he say? Hasn't changed his rap in years. Well... I think uh, the BFLA well, like, and other people radio shows to or, you know, their act together. People like you. I don't have anything against you other than uh, the way you pre present yourself. Oh. Well, Scott, one parting word. <laughs> Bottom line, uh, for, for after six weeks stay uh, for a snowbird, if they, for every dollar they spend, it costs the uh, local, uh, state, and county governments a dollar nine to support them. Wouldn't surprise me in the least. So it frankly, wouldn't weeks, surprise me in the least. Every taxpayer nine cents a day, nine mm. cents per dollar. I mean, uh, I, I've got nothing against legitimate tourism. I have nothing against it at all. And you know, obviously, this is America. Everybody's entitled to come here that wants to come here. But I am getting a little bit sick and tired of a relatively small group of people who earned their livings on tourism and try to shove it down the rest of our throats that we should be delighted and thrilled to have this onslaught every year of, you know, brain-damaged idiots coming down here and messing things up. Okay, and also, uh, I'd like to say to Scott in Clearwater, uh, I got a message from God, Scott, and he wanted me to pass it on to you. He said to turn off your radio, uh, disconnect your phone, uh, watch Channel 22 and eat locusts and honey. Didn't he say anything about changing his dress? <laughs> well, he asked him if uh, he could get it pressed at least. Oh, okay. Thanks, DB. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, hey, Scott told me to tell you, look out. He's got the lawyers working day and night, baby. Boy, I'm, I'm trembling in my boots, man. I just <laughs> hope management doesn't hear Scott's calls. Really? Hmm. It's very interesting, especially a, a couple of the, uh, of the Spanish uh, adjectives that... Uh, Lionel used, which I understood. <laughs> oh, really? Was Lionel saying dirty things in Spanish on my show? Yes. Oh. And I, I mean, I was in there going, I said, no, I don't believe he said that. <laughs> no. Well, the Brinkley would have been envious, but it would, you know, probably Koppel at least. <laughs> at least Koppel. I think all four of them are going to be on with him tonight, too, on Nightline. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, right. If, oh, no, Danny. Yeah, I did it. Well, you, but the way I look at it, Bob, that's money for Seattle. That, it's just money for Seattle. Yeah, but man, I'm going to work. Yeah, I know it's a dress. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. Well, I missed the one I wanted to get, but I got another one which I, you know, which I really would have got, would have wanted to work. Well, at. you were going after what? Uh, Lot and Child seat in the Senate, exactly. right? And yeah, they, they didn't get that. Yeah, that or a brain surgeon. Mm. They said, no, your brain, your brain damaged enough. You know, mm. I said, well, okay, you know, just it was just a fantastic show. It really was. I'd like to see you do it again. <laughs> <laughs> We, we, we shall think about it, perhaps in a moment of weakness when I open up the paper and it says nothing, nothing at all to talk about. We'll do it again. <laughs> Charlie in West Tampa, your turn at WFLA. How's it going, Bob? Okay. Touche. It was a great show. Wait a second, is that another Spanish cuss word or no, something? That, no, that was just uh, one of the most common words we heard today. Oh. <laughs> but uh, it was well worth the wait. Listen, Bob, I put together another uh, group for you. 
Another Lassiter group will yeah, lay it on me now. Or maybe a slow Saturday or something. Oh, all Saturdays are slow. Well, please, please people, don't forget tomorrow. Please. How about Bubba, Tex, Jim? Tex? Who's Tex? Tex. That's the guy that always calls you up and... Uh, don't remember him. Hey, wishes you uh, the fleas of a thousand camels or whatever. No, I don't remember him. Okay, well, you know, Jim from Largo, the condom mobile. Oh, yes. And, and Renee, the Cuban from Hoboken. Rene, yeah, I remember him. He called once this Okay, week. all those guys versus Dick Norman and the guy that calls up and says, I agree with everything you say, Bob. Right? Uh-huh. That's the team. But uh, I enjoyed it, Bob. The only, the only thing was uh, Carolyn kind of disappointed me a little bit. She was seems so predictable or something. And it, uh, what do you mean? They're all predictable. Yeah, well, I really I, I really was impressed with their comments on the White Nest Monster. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that, that was the one issue that I, you know, snuck in there. That was the, that was the real clincher. Yeah, that was good. Uh, I got a message for Scott, too, Bob. Oh, okay. The weasel address. His mouth reminds me of a drag strip. Everybody peels their rubbers in it. But, uh, anyways, I got, I got those uh, cartoons and stuff on the way for you, Bob, for a belated birthday gift. Well, thank you much. And it was real good. And it was worth the wait. And keep up the good work, Bob. Okay. See you later. Take care. In Old Hillsborough Old. County. Well, as I know that it's, you know... Legit. I'm a, a PLP listener, but I followed you over here to FLA. Well, thank you, Eddie. I appreciate that, and so does FLA. And your um, nighttime show has gone to hell in a handbasket. No, I think it's a guy named Shanks. Yeah. <laughs> and he had on a fortune teller last night, and that's uh, if that's what it's come to over there... Uh, Cancel the fortune teller we had booked for tomorrow. <laughs> what was that, Eddie? <laughs> You wouldn't have a fortune teller on. You got more. Bet, your, you bet your bippy I would. <laughs> I said, tell you what I'd really love to hear sometime. You just come on at random and pull four, four calls in together and start throwing questions. <laughs> you, know, you say, you know, are you willing to do ah, that? Ah, you're trying to get me, trying, trying to ruin my career, I see. Oh, I think it'd be funny. Kind of like that day you had uh, Tom on as the guest host. Oh, I'm good old Tom. To him. <laughs> wonder whatever happened to Tom. <laughs> I don't, I don't Tom made me so. You know, again. I am still mad about that. I thought for sure that good for nothing, so whatever sure that good for nothing so whatever would break and he kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger you know that's why i say it would really be fun to have four people come on because you may really have any breakdown on the radio <laughs> oh that would oh, be God, great I can't take another one. <laughs> oh, that would be great i remember oh i recall once <laughs> this goes back almost two years ago when mike levine was at the station and he left and they went through a well you know let's be honest with each other a charade yeah of uh hosts auditioning on the air just mere mortals and there was one poor guy that came into the studio mm -hmm. and he had about two minutes worth of monologue he went through it looked down at the phones nothing and he just went crazy he said aren't any calls aren't any calls oh aren't any calls and whoever i think it was i think it was chuck harder at the time who was working here who was kind of running the controls of the board because it's just a little bit too much for mere mortals yeah. off the street, uh, suddenly went to commercial and came back and the guy was gone. Oh, gee. I loved it. Loved every minute of it. It's just that you, you're you not supposed to let it show. Right. Because I often sit here and go through a two-minute monologue, look at the phones and say, oh, God, aren't any calls? Aren't any calls? What am I going to do? I yeah. Well, that didn't work. What are you going to do now? What am I going to do now? Yeah. Go home, take a hot bath, right. uh, fill up the mayonnaise jar with red wine and whiskey and get Mary to play the accordion for me and just mellow out for the rest of the day. You know, Bob, just on another point real quick. There's one thing that's been puzzling me for the last couple days. Rapid report. I understand, Gary, that next Monday you're doing the McHenry Group and you'll have all four of those bozos in the plane with you. <laughs> oh, God. Can you imagine? I can't even imagine being in a large room with all four of them. Either can I. Either can I. I'm, I'm still Not too happy about being in the same town with all four of them. <laughs> I'm still excited about Mary's accordion tunes. I haven't gotten over that yet. We know. Number two, Lionel, I think he's a legend in his own mind, and he's also got a very deep psychological problem. I think he's got a male sexual organ fixation. Every time he tried, he couldn't make a point or he tried to cut somebody down, he'd always refer to, I'm going to cut this off. You got, you know, gonads, this, that, that. He always referred to that, so he does have a problem. Well, you know, Lionel, they, they, Lionel, working his way through law school, did circumcisions. <laughs> you know, they, the two of those two, they both seem... You know, I haven't heard anything new in the in the couple of weeks that I've been listening to the show. They always, it's always the same old rhetoric. You know, they keep on repeating the same thing. Uh, 
Well, the actually, other, the actually, the guys, truth of the matter is they rarely call in. We just have a tape and keep playing it over and over again. That's why. It, uh, now, the other two guys on the show, yeah, the, their problem is they were born that way, and they were raised that way. That's their problem. You really and think they so? don't know any other way. But there is no excuse for Caroline and Lionel. You know, the education that they have, there was no excuse for the way they were name-calling. But besides that, I thought your show was really, really entertaining. Well, thank you, Nick. All right, I've got to go now. Isn't it WFLA? Rich in St. Pete, you're on the air, WPLB, WFLA, somewhere. How are you doing? Fine. Well, I'll tell you what, today I'm unloading my truck. You were at the, the dump next... unloading your truck? Yeah, okay. and the guy next to me had your program on. No wonder I tried to give those other call letters, yeah? And uh, I'm listening around, and I thought, God, it's funny, Q QZoo is really doing something really strange. Uh-huh. And it kept going on for about five minutes, and I thought... No, it went on for two hours. Well, I thought, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever listened to. Uh-huh. And I couldn't believe this is on the radio. I mean, the people you had on... Yeah. It was absolutely ridiculous, and you egging them on like you were egging them on. Egging them on? I wasn't egging them on at all. Well, Not the way that you crowd, that's why I put them on, or whatever. I, knew I wouldn't I mean, have to you're, egg them on. You're approaching very delicate subjects... And you're very lady. delicate subjects. Will Jim and Tammy come back to the PTL? Is a very you know how about how do you feel about the Loch Ness monster? They're, they're, these are delicate subjects to you, Rich. Did, did you ever consider a job at Pinellas Horizons? Uh, you'd be a great counselor there. Don't have to. I make a fortune here. I, I doubt it. Like well, I don't said, doubt it, Rich. I do. Well, <laughs> I'm not down there unloading the truck at the dump. Well, uh, I mean, I clean up my yard. Okay. Well, I keep my yard clean too, Rich. Yeah. I think you probably pay somebody to keep yours clean. But well, the fact of the matter is I do. Like I said, what nonsense. These people and the way they were talking. Great radio, wasn't it? Well, I thought it was trash. But you're still listening. Uh, yeah, only because I'm infuriated at the things that were on the radio today and the way people talk. Well, that's what I get paid to do, Rich, is to infuriate people so they'll keep listening. Well, you're doing, it a, works. Good, you're doing a good job of it. Thank you, Rich. Bye. Bye. This is what I get paid to do. LA. Yeah, I can't believe what I just heard. Uh, early 12 o'clock show. Yeah. And where do you find these people? Where do I find? They find me. It was absolute trash. Trash? Absolute trash. What, what was the matter with it, Tim? What was the matter with it? You won't have people talking about issues. You were having a bunch of jerks yelling at each other no, and calling each other names. We talked about names. issues. We talked about a lot of issues. You didn't talk. Yeah, but it was the same thing. The same thing. I'm telling you, the show is the inquirer of radio. Well, thank you, Tim. That's quite a compliment. Very I can't successful believe it. publication. Why don't you have some people in the show who can talk about issues and not call each other names? Well, Tim, it's because I don't like having a two share of the audience. I prefer a four, five, or six. You couldn't hear who was talking. They were all talking at the same time. Mm -hmm. They were embarrassing themselves. Yes, they were. People love it. And you were egging them on the whole way. I no, I wasn't egging them on at all. Don't have to egg those people on. That's why they were selected. They were selected. People like you that I have to egg on. You found those people? No, they found me. I don't think. Well, can't you find anyone else better? Call me a liar, Tim. You're calling what? What would you suggest I have you? Huh? No. You know, find nice someone who's got some nerd, a rather dull, dim-witted person like yourself. I don't want dull, and I'm not dull either. Okay, I have a decent Couldn't job. Couldn't prove it by this call. What? You have a decent job. Yes. Oh, really? A job that's so decent it allows you to spend hours upon hours listening to the radio and then sit on hold for 24 minutes to get on the air. Yeah. Oh, it's quite a job. job. Yeah, you know, what are you, a security guard? Is this it for you? Is this what you want to do? You better believe it. It's a shitty job. Really? Yeah. So are you, my young friend. Love talking to security guards. Uh, listen, uh, uh, personally, I don't like you, okay? Mm hmm I've listened to you before on the other station, and I listen to you on the station. Mm hmm But today you had the best show I've ever heard in my life on talk radio. Well, thank you. We're different. Uh-huh. I can lay down a, a patch of it, go to sleep, and eat it. And it don't bother me. Well, if, you know... Why is that? That's what you find tasty. Go for it, Cage. Well, they do. Any, oh. any, any, uh, talk show host since uh, uh, Jerry Williams in Boston that I've heard. Mm -hmm. Do you remember Jerry? Uh, yeah. Well, you know what he did one time? Well, I frankly couldn't care less, but I assume that you're going to trouble with trouble us with it anyway, so go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I mean, he was against parking, you know, the parking laws. Mm -hmm. So he, he 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 parked in the wrong place in front of the studio, and the police 
grabbed the car, we jumped into it, and he got the national prominence and all that. Mm, son of a gun. Huh? Son of a gun. What a guy. Oh, I thought it was interesting. Okay. But anyway, ID, ID card. Uh, oh, yes. Membership yes. card. Uh, identifying the member as part of Bob's mob. There will be an ID card. Okay. There will great. definitely be an ID card. Just let me know when they're coming out, and I'll send in my cash. Okay. <laughs> okay? Be good. Good, thank you. Thanks, Richard. Mike and Hey, how's it going, last Fine, night? Steve. Hey, I just want to comment on the show today. I think it was pretty cool. Well, thank you. Hey, uh, you're not allowed to cuss on radio, are you? Like that one car a little while ago? Uh, not allowed to. It's 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 uh, frowned upon you. Well, it's not stoppable or anything, but, I mean, nothing can happen, can it? Nothing can happen? No. I mean, we can't trace things possible way? No. Well, basically commenting on that show today, you really, uh, they seem pretty shallow on everything they were talking about. I mean, they went in depth, but not, like, wholeheartedly, like, their opinions were just... Well, don't be too hard on them. They didn't know what we were going to be talking about. Well, they just had it thrown at them cold. Well, given that, I guess it was pretty good. And, you know, most of them were still fuming from the last uh, question because of insults that had been hurled in their directions. Oh, well, that's cool. Long, hot bath. Fill up an old mayonnaise jar with red wine and whiskey. Ask Mary to play some soft tunes on the accordion and just kind of mellow out. I tell you, it's been a rough one. Uh, 